Welcome to the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. They are ready to refill the bill here in Manhattan, Kansas. K-State back home, the stadium ready to hold all these fans for their home opener of the 2021 season. The opponent, the Saluskis of Southern Illinois. Welcome inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Courtney Lyle alongside former Oklahoma State quarterback, first round draft pick Brandon Whedon. Shane Sparks will also be down on the sidelines for us. And you take a look at both of these teams facing each other. They've got to make some changes from the opponents they faced last week. You're, ex you're exactly right, Courtney. This is two completely different styles of play on both sides of the ball. So this week, I'm sure the preparation was completely different than what they went through last year. But they've got a lot of veterans on, on both sides of the ball for both of these football teams. They're both extremely well coached. I expect a good football game. Yeah, hey, if you're a K-State fan, you know all about Deuce Vaughn. We, you like to see him play. We love to see him play, too. And um, he's, he's got a pretty good skill set. This guy's electric. They're, they want to get the ball to him early and often. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but anytime he touches it, he's just a big play threat. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's very versatile. He can line up in the backfield. You can split him out wide. He can run routes and catch the football. He's just a dynamic playmaker that this offense wants to start with. And he's been that way since he arrived in Manhattan. His numbers from last year, just wow. Over 600 rushing yards, over 400 receiving yards. He was the only player in the Big 12 to lead his team in both of those categories last season. And now he's just a sophomore and ready to rock again here in at K-State. Well, they'll be facing Southern Illinois, who has a quarterback who they absolutely love and have so much confidence in, in Nick Baker. This guy's a lot of fun to watch. He reminds me a little bit of a Graham Harrell, this style of play. He's not the biggest guy. He stands in there. You can tell he's extremely moxie. He's, got, he's a very savvy football player. This coaching staff has a lot, of, a lot of confidence in him. He's a guy that can sling it all over the yard, and they, they like to stretch the ball vertically. He's a lot of fun to watch. Well, these fans are ready. These teams are ready. Inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium, moments away from kickoff. It's been 651 days since they've allowed max capacity here inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Tonight, nearly 50,000 strong are full of pens up energy. You can feel it. The electricity and the tension in the air is palpable. Now, just minutes ago, a lot of these players made the run out that tunnel for the first time in their career to a packed house, a sea of purple, including star running back Deuce Vaughn. We talked to him yesterday. He said when he ran out that tunnel, he would be wide-eyed, soaking it all in and reminding himself that he gets to do this. He gets to play the game that he loves. Hey, can you imagine if he breaks off a big run tonight? This place will erupt. The fans will be heard across the way in Lawrence. Isn't it great to have college football back? Let's have ourselves some fun tonight. Courtney? Shane, Deuce was so excited. He had been here on a recruiting visit to feel the environment, but as you said, hasn't played in this environment. Here is his chance. Southern Illinois won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So Malik Knowles and Phillip Brooks back to receive the opening kickoff for the Wildcats. And they'll let that one soar. K-State will start at the 25-yard line. Well, it was great to see this K-State team back together, back with Skylar Thompson in at quarterback last week. Got a big win over Stanford, and they look different with Skylar Thompson out there. They do. They're a very balanced football team. That's what I really like about this unit. They're very experienced up front. They've got guys that have played a lot of football together, and they've got plenty of playmakers on the outside. But it all starts with number seven. He's the guy that kind of makes this thing go. He's a great leader. It was so fun to talk to him and kind of get his feel in the game. This guy is a football guy. I expect a big night from number seven. He's a, he's a heck of a football player. And you can tell he loves K-State. Empty backfield look for Skylar Thompson. Deuce Vaughn is the one in motion, number 22. And they give it to him on a little jet sweep. You can already see the speed as he trudges forward for the first down. That's exactly what they want to do. Like I said, they want to get him, get him going early and often. He's a guy that, again, he's not the biggest guy out here, but he's tough. He's versatile. He runs low to the ground, runs with great pad level. He's just an electric player. They're going to find very, you know, a, a ton of different ways to try to get the ball in his hands because he's literally a, he's a, he's a he's a broken tackle away from a touchdown pretty much every time he touches it. He'll line up to Skylar Thompson's right. Two wide receivers at the top of your screen. Ball on the 35. 
Coming off play action, Thompson dropping back, looking way downfield. Target is Malik Knowles. You bet. What a play. P.J. Jules didn't have a chance. Malik Knowles all over it. That's a veteran quarterback right there. He knew he had the entire right side of the field to work with. So he didn't want to lean him up the hash. He brought him. He kind of flattened him to the sideline. What a great play by number seven and number four. A 43-yard pickup on a bomb from Skylar Thompson. Great play call. They kind of they basically ran the little play action off what they did on the first play of the game. Nice little wrinkle. This is Joe Irvin. He's got a hole two inside the 15. I mean, it was so great to see Skylar Thompson back on the field. Remember, he was injured in game three of the season last year, but he stayed locked in, and he talked to us about that. He did. Again, he's a, he's a football guy. He sat up here in the booth with, with the, the offensive coordinator, Courtney Messingham, and really saw the game from a different perspective. You can tell his leadership. He learned a lot in those, those you know, few games he had off last year. He was able to grow from it, and he is a leader, and he's a great football player. They're in good hands with, with this quarterback. And no fear in him. Joe Irvin to his left right now, second and one. Irvin gets the call. And it's a first down for K-State. Bryce Notree, the middle linebacker, in on the tackle for Southern Illinois. Bryce flies around, doesn't he? Yeah. He just, he's one guy on that defense. It's just you rewind it. He just uh, he just he brings it. He flies. He runs sideline to sideline. He plays with great speed, great instincts. He can lay the wood. He's a he's a great middle linebacker. He's kind of the voice of this defense. I expect a lot of big time plays just like that from the middle linebacker. Yeah, number 54 in that white jersey, Bryce Notree, out of Arlington, Texas. Deuce cuts back inside. Still fighting inside the five, he goes. Kevin Glacian in there for Southern Illinois. This play was well blocked, but what a cut in the hole. He's just got vision. He's just got a feel when the ball is in his hands. He's not afraid to make a guy miss, whether it's in, in space on the perimeter or in the hole like that run. That was a great run on first down. A seven-yard pickup for Deuce Vaughn. He had 124 rushing yards last week and a touchdown. Yeah, him and Joe Irvin are built a lot of light. Yeah. You know, so they've got some similar stature. They're two really good backs. They've used both on this opening drive. Straight up the middle. Touchdown, Deuce. K-State on the board first. That's their guy. Good things happen when you hand the 22. Good drive by K-State. Great chunk play, good throw by Tyler, Tyler, Tom, uh, by Skyler Thompson. Sorry, Malik Knowles down the down the right sideline to set up a great, great scoring drive. Dayton Winkle on for the PAT, and it is up and good. Kansas State making a statement on that opening drive, highlighted by a 43-yard pickup to Malik Knowles. But of course, you cap it with Deuce Vaughn. This guy's just got a knack for the game. Wildcats on them early. Back after this. A six play, 75 yard drive for this K State offense, and they cap it with a four yard run by Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, great job by the left side of this offensive line to get enough push. Just a great finish by number 22 to get the Wildcats on the board early. There's their head coach, Chris Kleiman, in his third season after having so much success at North Dakota State. He won four national championships there and now made a statement last week with that 24-7 win over Stanford and good start here in their first home game of the season. Ty Zentner back to kick this one off for the Wildcats. And
and they will let it soar. So Southern Illinois will start from its own 25 yard line. This will be the first time that we get to see Nick Baker in person and he had to win a quarterback battle at fall camp. This kid's tough. You know, he's been through a lot. and it's, uh, it, it obviously shows on the field. Just watching the tape this last week, preparing for this game, I mean, he doesn't flinch. He stands in the pocket. He's not the biggest guy, but he stands in there. He can, he can deliver the football. There's, there's a reason. They got a lot of confidence in him. He is a strong-willed guy. This team rallies around him. They're in good hands. He's a, he's a great football player. It's a, this offense is a lot of fun to watch. And I threw for 460 yards last week against SEMO. That's a school record. Hand off to Justin Strong. Let's go down to Shane. Well, Coach Hill was able to witness a two-minute drive from Nick Baker claiming his second Illinois State Championship game. And it recalls watching that game. And even though they had another guy committed to that position, he wasn't going to let this guy go somewhere else. Great poise and confidence. Just something about him. It's paid off. And there's an interception, a turnover by Southern Illinois. Jalen Pickle, the big man in the right place at the right time. Flag on the field. What a momentum play that would be. Jalen Pickle's always around the football. We'll get the call from Chris Talon. He is our white hat today. The on the field is an interception. An eligible player downfield, number 59, offense. That penalty is declined. First down, Kansas State. So it was Ryan Hennington who got there first, and then Jalen Pickle there to make the grab. What a play. Former quarterback, just a savvy play, tips it up to his guy, the big man. Probably won a little more yards after the catch. But K-State will take it. What a great play to start this game for this Kansas State defense. Yeah, we asked Joe Klanderman, who is the defensive coordinator for K-State, about Ryan Hennington. Look at that. I mean, he told him a couple years ago, he was a scout team quarterback. I want to do whatever I can to help this team, whether it's play defense, what have you. He's at his third position now for K-State. That's impressive. As a quarterback, I'm not sure I ever had that in me to go to the coach and say, yeah. I want to play free safety. Yeah. I want to play special <laughs> teams. No thanks. But that just shows the grit this guy has. You know, he kind of is the quarterback out there. He sees things ex extremely well. He's a lot of fun to watch. He, he flies around. That was a big time, big time play right there. So now you give the ball back to a veteran in Skylar Thompson and his offense as Chris Talon is at the monitor right now taking a look at this play. Of course, you, you got to make sure he got that hand underneath it, but it looked pretty clear. Yeah, from what we can see up here, it's I just don't see how there's any way they can overturn it. I don't see enough video evidence that they can overturn it. So. I expect this one to stand and puts K-State in great field position. We saw this defense last week. They came out, they surprised Stanford in that three down front. That was something that Chris Kleiman and his coaching staff had been keeping a secret as much as possible. And they did a good job of that. They rotate in a ton of guys. I mean, this defense is pretty electric. They are, and, and they're deep. You know, I, I, I think I text you throughout the week, you know, this defensive line just rotate guys through, you know, and, and sometimes they're only rushing three guys, but they're 10 deep at that D-line position. And that's a luxury. Those guys can play hard. They're only having to play 15, 16 snaps a game. And, you know, in secondary, they're deep as well. So, you know, you couple that with, with this scheme that kind of is becoming a trend on the defensive side of the ball, this 3-3-5, this three, three, if you will, and, and adding extra speed in the secondary. It, again, as a quarterback, you watch the tape, and there's just not a ton of holes. If you can find a way to execute and find a way to draw – you know, some defenses up to create some confusion. We, and I asked Coach Kleiman about that yesterday. Yeah. I, I said, you know, what, what's the reason a lot of teams are going to this? And uh, he said a lot of, you know, in, in the Big 12, a lot of teams run this RPO, this run pass option. And this was a way they felt like they could slow that down. And what do, what do we have with Southern Illinois? They're a run pass option right. team. That play right there was was uh, kind of a, on the scramble. But they're, they've got all, all these guys in coverage, so it becomes tough. So, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm, everybody's going to this style of play. And uh, you can tell it's given offenses fits early in this year. Yeah, it was really, it was Iowa State and Baylor really first in the Big 12 that you saw kind of make this switch to the three down front? Absolutely, yeah. It was, you know, K-State, or I'm sorry, uh, Iowa State uh, was the first time, first team I saw it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of planes flying in and out of Ames to try to yeah. <laughs> try to understand why they made the move and, and uh, kind of how they go about it. But it's a, it's a good scheme. 
Um, it forces you to be patient, and there's just not a lot of holes. So if you have players that can execute it and are willing to go out and, and buy in, it makes it tough on these on these offenses. Let's send it down to Shane. Well, this is exactly the start that Coach Kleiman and the Wildcats were looking for. The message this week, do not look at the name in front of the jersey. He knows Southern Illinois is hungry. These are frightening games, and you better be ready to play. He's from this conference. He's had some big wins when at North Dakota State against Power 5 schools. Very familiar with how hungry these teams play in these situations. And, of course, this team has listened. They've come out quick. Well, hey, Kansas State, Shane, can't forget last year. They lost to Arkansas State. Yeah, there's good players. I mean, obviously with the, the portal, there's a lot of guys that transfer in. So you got some really good players, you know, at these FCS schools all across the country. Um, you've seen what's happened early early on this year. There's been some teams that have had some scares. And there's been some teams that have, that have been beat. Uh, you know, Coach Clemens has been right in the middle of it. Uh, he's, he's played against two, which is ironically two Iowa teams and had a lot of success. So. Uh, he's a uh, he's a great football coach. He knows what it takes to beat these teams. Um, he knows there's also a lot of talent uh, across the board on a lot of these FCS teams. This is a, a little ridiculous how long this, this review is taking right now. Yeah, I don't quite understand this. They still have a yardage marker for 30 as well, so not real sure sure what's going on here. And I think Chris Talon is ready to give us that call now. After further review, the ruling of the interception stands. First down. Yeah, so as we suspected, Kansas State going to get the ball on the Southern Illinois 34 yard line. Skyler Thompson ready to go back to work after his defense forced a turnover. Deuce Vaughn in the backfield, three wide receivers to the near side. Play action over the middle. Phillip Brooks threw it behind him and it's picked off. Southern Illinois back the other way. Clayton Bush on the interception. I think Skyler gets what he wants. Just he'd like to have this one back, if I were to guess. It throws a little bit behind his receiver. Southern Illinois is right there to make him pay. You think you have the momentum and then one play. Yeah, split safety coverage into quarters. This is tough. This is not really where you want to go with the football. I think he was trying to work to his left side down the seam, off the play action, came back to his number two receiver. In my opinion, got there just a little bit late, uh, which caused him to kind of overthrow this ball and throw it behind Phillip Brooks up the seam. Skyler Thompson had an interception last week, but Courtney Messingham told us their offensive coordinator, you know, he, he wasn't too upset about it, didn't feel like he came out and was pressing too much, and he was able to regroup and move on from it last week. Expect yeah. the same this week. Yeah, he's battle tested, that's for sure. Nick Baker was trying to launch one out to Justin Strong, the running back, and it fell to the ground right in front of him. This K-State defense is going to have to change their approach this this week after coming off the win against Stanford last week. This is the spread. They're going to do every trick in the book. They're going to run reverses. They're going to do all kinds of stuff. So the rules are going to change. They've got to be good in space. They've got to know the rules and coverage. It's a completely different scheme than what they faced a week ago. Yeah, K-State said they have a lot of gadgets talking about Southern Illinois. Justin Strong with the run, just short of the 40-yard line. Southern Illinois just demolished SEMO last week, 47 to 21. Nick Baker set that single game passing record with 460 yards. He didn't even play in the fourth quarter. He made it look easy, didn't he? He just kind of slung it all over yard and, and uh, kind of played pitch and catch throughout that game. That was, a, that was a great football game and a good way to start the year for Nick Baker. Baker three targets at the top of the screen. Eyeing Landon Lenore and throws it in front of him. Couldn't get back. Echo Boydo in coverage for K-State. I love that name, Echo Boydo. Yeah. I love it. I'm going to say that all night. That's a, he's a good football player. He just shows up on tape. Good coverage there, forcing an errant throw. Good stop there on third down. 
Well, as you said, Brandon, it's hard for quarterbacks facing this kind of defense because you got eight guys dropping back in coverage, and they've got some really talent and talented group in their DBs and linebackers. They force you to be patient. I think that's the main thing. He's not to kind of change again what he's seen in, on the defensive side of the ball with this K-State defense because, you know, last week he was seeing a lot of single high and, and a lot of, call it what it is, a lot of wide open throws. That's not going to be the case tonight. He's going to have to be patient and put these longer, you know, 10 play drives together. And when you get in the red zone, you got to find a way to capitalize. So Skylar Thompson will try to shake off the interception that K-State had on their last play. They'll start on their own 23 when we come back. Hey, the biggest signee for Chris Kleiman and this K-State team was Gunnar Reed back in December, a lifelong K-State fan. Just look at his wall in his room, has grown really close with these players. We saw Skylar Thompson point to his wristband last week after scoring a touchdown with the words G-Man on it. Unfortunately, G-Man passed away back in July, on July 23rd after dealing with multiple health issues, but a K-State Wildcat through and through and will always be a big part of this program. Joe Irvin on the run and picks up the first down. And Shane, there was a really special moment pregame involving G-Man. You're right, Courtney, very special moment there for the coin tosses. G-Man's number 10 jersey was brought out to midfield for the coin toss. He was remembered, as you mentioned, had those health issues endured almost 40 surgeries, but had such a big impact during the rest of the game. Director of recruiting Taylor Bratt will wear that number 10 jersey. Gonna read G-Man. He's a wildcat forever. Courtney? Yeah, it meant so much, still means so much to Skylar Thompson, the quarterback of this Kansas State team. This time they hand it off to the fullback, Jax Deneen. Bryce Notre in on the stop. I like this formation. You have three backs in the backfield. So you can do so many different things out of this formation. The thing I like about it the most is the defense kind of has to line up the way they want to play. It's hard to disguise when you have that many guys in the backfield. Back-to-back -back plays, little, little lead sweeps there uh, to the left. I love the design. It started to work well, just change up the personnel a little bit. And again, right here, they're going back to it. I just, it clears things up for the quarterback. You kind of know exactly what you're going to get as far as the coverage goes. And Skylar Thompson is a veteran. He goes to the air, kicks it out again to Deneen. Jakari Patterson gets there first for Southern Illinois. It's a good tackle in space. That's a big point. Better get your pad level down. Take those knees out because he's uh, he's looking for punishment. That's a uh, it's a good tackle in space. So On third, down. yeah, third down coming, third and five. Balls at the K State 38. We'll send Philip Brooks in motion to the other side. Thompson flushed out of the pocket. On the move, looking downfield for Malik Knowles. Gets around the DB. Malik Knowles is just a ball player. What a move. Totally blew by James Caesar. It's a great play by Skylar Thompson. Avoiding the rush. We all know how athletic he is. He's able to get out to the pocket to his right side, which is obviously his throwing side. Great play. He got a free runner throw on the run, stop your receiver, let him come back and get the football. And Luke Knowles does the rest. He's just a playmaker. That's a 50-yard pickup. His second catch over 40 yards in this game. And now K-State inside the Southern Illinois 15. Deuce. Not thrown down yet. Back the other way. Oh, and he ran into Skylar Thompson, who is still down. Oh, you don't want to see that if you're a K-State fan. Skylar Thompson, of course, last year his season cut short 
in the third game of the season, a shoulder injury. I mean, this guy means everything to Kansas State and this team. We'll keep an eye on Skyler. We'll step aside here. A terrible sight if you're a K-State fan. Skyler Thompson being helped off the field. He is in the medical tent right now. Shane's working to get us an update, but watch this. Non-contact. Hate to see it. The guy's already been through a lot. He's an impressive young man with a bright future. I just I'm sick to my stomach up here. I mean, you see Chris Kleiman, their head coach. He's shaken up too. He went over, was one of the first ones over there holding Skyler's hand on the field. And so Will Howard comes in. And Will Howard's been in this situation before. He's a sophomore, but he had to come in last season in game number three against Texas Tech. When Skylar Thompson went out with that shoulder injury, he was their starter moving forward. That's the fortunate thing for K-State moving forward. He's a young guy. He was playing at the age of 17, which is just hard to fathom. He's a young guy. He's a big guy. He's very talented. He's got, got some experience now. So Coach Kleinman told us yesterday when we talked to him you know, that there's going to be an opportunity sometime this year, whether it be you know mop-up duty at the end or a, unfortunately a situation like this. So they don't expect to drop off. They like what he can do, and he's a, he's a good football player. Irvin. Falling forward, ball came out. They're spotting it just short of the goal line. Southern Illinois says that they have the ball. No, so he was down before that football came out. It's a good cut there in the hole. Looks like he's clearly down there, just short of the goal line. Down here, this is football's precious. You've got to hold on to football. Tuck it. You've got the hopes and dreams of this entire sideline over here wearing purple in your hands. You've got to hold on to football at all times. Howard on the sneak. Touchdown, K-State. Wildcats needed that, something to cheer about after Skylar Thompson going out of this game. Yeah, you can feel the energy kind of get sucked out of here when you see Skylar Thompson walking to the, to the injury tent. You know, right there, you get under center, you got a big quarterback, you just got to get a half a yard. So you tell your offensive line, hey, I'm, I'm behind you left guard or I'm behind you right guard. And let's get in the end zone. Try to take a two-score lead. Extra point is up and good. Kansas State on top by 14. Will Howard got a lot of help from his O-line. Yeah, they're low to the ground. These guys are, are nasty, as the coaches say. Those guys are you know, just guys that are gritty. They like to hit people, come off the football. They know that you know, I used to have O-line coaches say, if, if the offensive line scores, we score. And that's a perfect example of it right there. We want to remind you next Saturday on Big 12 now right here on ESPN Plus at 2 Eastern. Nevada will be here in Manhattan to take on the Wildcats of Kansas State. And then at 3.30 Eastern, Baylor heads to Lawrence, Kansas to face off against the Jayhawks. And 7 FIU takes on Texas Tech in a nighttime matchup. How's Kansas feeling after losing to Coastal Carolina for the third time? Well, that's a good Coastal Carolina team. It is a very good team. They do a, they do a good job on offense. They play hard on defense. You know, I, I knew it was going to be a tall task. And uh, Chanteliers went to, went to work. The Chanteliers. Chanteliers, I, I knew it. got to get it right, right, man. You got great Jamie, uniforms. Right? Oh, yeah, Jamie Chadwell has done a fantastic job. He's got a little baby mullet going on, too. So this kick back into the end zone. And we'll see Southern Illinois come back out. The Southern Illinois team last year, they went 6-4 and four overall, 3-3 three and three in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. They finished fifth. Nick Hill is their head coach. He knows what it's like to be Nick Baker because he has played quarterback at Southern Illinois. As a quarterback, you love that because you know the situation you've been. you got to have a short memory. You know, this is a big drive for Southern Illinois. They need to come down, put a good drive together, find a way to come away with some points, and just be patient. A lot of game left. 
Off play action, Baker over the middle looking for his favorite target in Avante Cox and went through his hands. They had a great connection last week. Cox had five catches for 187 receiving yards. Yeah, first play of the game, 99 yards. That, that helps the stats, but that's a great way to get the year going. Yeah, he's a very fluid, very smooth receiver. And it's pretty, pretty clear why they like to go to him early and often. And number 11 in that white jersey for Southern Illinois. They'll put him at the very bottom of your screen. A little wildcat here. Yeah, Javon Williams Jr. They'll use him a lot like this. They hand it off to Isaiah Hartrup and hurdles a man. A yard short of the first down. Ross Elder got hurdled. How about the freshman? No fear here. I always get nervous when guys leave their feet, but, but a great play. Sets up a short third and one. Still Williams out of the Wildcat will run it. He can also throw the football. Ross Elder first there on the tackle. First down for Southern Illinois. What do you think about this look and how much they use Javon Williams? You see why the guy's explosive. And he's, you know, he's, he's especially in situations like that where you need a yard or you know maybe down the goal line. He's a big body guy that can, you know, one he can get your first downs, but he can also kind of bounce off guys and, and get some yards after contact. And you love to see that. So yeah, he's a versatile guy that they like to have the ball in his hands. Nick Baker back in at quarterback, and there's the connection between Baker and Avante Cox. Love the decision. Get the ball out of your hands, you got free access to your right side of your field. A little quick out to, to Avante Cox, your playmaker. This is the kind of tempo Southern Illinois wants to play with. Second and five. Baker off play action. Nobody to go to. Gets the first down right at the line. He starts his slide. TJ Smith made him get down. This is that moxie I was kind of talking about. He's just kind of savvy. There's not a whole lot of pressure, but you know, he knows his, his one, it's basically a one route play. So he knew he had to go get what he could get on his own. Javon Williams on the carry. There's a flag on the very near sideline at about the 48 yard line. You know, as a defense, when you face an offense like that, where you have essentially, you got a wildcat quarterback that can throw it, it's tough. Yeah, and they'll put Williams all over the field. We saw that last week. Um, obviously, he can throw, too. That makes it, again, that makes it tough. You line up, you think it's going to be a wildcat, and then he'll throw a hitch, or he'll throw a little stop route. So, yeah, that's that's one thing that uh, you know, as this K-State defense prepared all week. They couldn't, they couldn't get too aggressive. So Baker will work out of the pistol, turns around, and gives it to Williams. Back to the 50. Javon Williams is just an athlete. I mean, so much so that uh, I think it was Blake Rowland, their offensive coordinator, who said, yeah, um, have you seen him dive? And I said, absolutely not. I have not seen him dive. Javon Williams. How we about had, that? We had to get video of that, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> That's pretty impressive. I That's tried to get man. you to try it. No way. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I'll stick with the no flips, just the dive, yeah. <laughs> big splash, the whole thing. So, no, that's a big man. Big man doing a lot of, a lot of turning over there. Baker with room to run and takes it to the 45-yard line in K-State territory. I like that. The second long, we call this get back on track, get yourself in a situation on third down where it's a little more manageable. I like that play goal. Five-yard pickup, it'll be third and eight. Baker launching one. And it was great coverage by TJ Smith. He just shows up, doesn't he? He is a guy that is all over the football field. He's hungry. He's a guy that uh, always around the football. Yeah, Eli Huggins is down, though. One of their defensive linemen, one of those leaders. His brother Jake also on the team. K-State has already lost its quarterback so far. Skylar Thompson was taken off the field, helped off the field a few plays ago. I'm glad to see that. He's a big, tough man. He's 
I love watching him play football. He just got a motor. The guy never stops. Just a bull rush, good spin moves, good hands. He's a good football player. I'm glad to see he's, he looks like he's all right. Now we saw that coverage too from TJ Smith in the secondary. Um, Joe Klanderman told us they were hurting in the secondary last year. They wanted to go out and get some guys to help them, got some transfers. And TJ Smith has really stepped up because he's healthy now. He tore his ACL last year. He was a guy that came to the coaching staff and said, you know, I want to watch tape. I want to keep it there when you're supposed to go home to your family. So he's a guy that, that loves ball, just listening to these coaches talk. And, you know, he, he loves to be out here. He's passionate about it. And you can tell on the field, he's a guy that, that plays with that passion and shows the passion. He looks like a vocal leader out there. He's kind of getting guys lined up. That's a good play for a young player. All right, it's fourth down. Nick Baker is out there. Javon Williams is with him. Jerron Rollins is the target. That's a good play design there. A little under, under route from the left side, working to his right. They came after him. Got to have a situation. K-State doesn't wait back. They come after him. Nick Baker does a good job of buying time, finding his wide receiver. They pick up the first down. That's their third first down tonight. Williams. Tries to cut back inside. A couple of K-State defenders hitch a ride. Well, you heard Shane talk about it, Brandon. I mean, Nick Baker makes plays. They saw that early on in high school. He may be 5'8", 5'9", but this team trusts him. Yeah, he's a guy that you know, when the team voted, he was one of the three toughest, strongest guys on the team, mentally, physically, the whole deal. He's a guy that obviously has got a lot of respect from his teammates, his coaching staff. He's just a football player. He's got that it factor, and that's one thing you can't teach. Baker eluding pressure. Runs out of bounds with just a couple yards to go to get that first down. Julius Brent forced him out the transfer from Iowa. Cody Fletcher also in there. Keep in mind, K-State does not have Daniel Green, their middle linebacker, for the first half because he was called for targeting in the second half of their opener last week against Stanford. Cody Fletcher's a good player. He's going to have to kind of fill that void for a little bit until we get to halftime. But this is a good, good core of linebackers. They play well together. They run great sideline to sideline. Third and three. Williams on the carry. Can he get around the end? Oh, that's going to be close. That is going to be really close. And Udike Usama was there, number 91. Fourth down. I love the aggressive. I love the aggressiveness here. You went for it in midfield. You might as well go for it at the 20. This is a game, you know, they have nothing to lose. Come in here, you're down two scores. I love this decision to go for it here. Nick Hill's been in this spot as a quarterback. He's aggressive. I like the play call. They just brought in Ty Daniel, the tight end as well, and they'll hand it off to Williams. He gets the first down. That is twice on this drive. They have gone for it on fourth down and converted. I think that was on the second effort there. He got stood up just short of the line again, it looked like. And a little second effort gets him the first down. That says a lot because this is a big K-State defensive front. They are. You could tell that was one of their, I would say, if you have a concern, is, is getting movement on this down front, whether it be three down, four down. You know, they're big guys. They're hard to move. So you got to find a way. you got to have a big back like that that can help move the pile when they get it going. Uh, that's a good good pickup there on fourth down to keep this drive alive. And Southern Illinois is going to call timeout. Southern Illinois. You run that two to this near side, and Xavion Furcron is one of those athletes who's there, their left guard. I mean, he is a big, strong football player. He is. And, uh, I mean, I've never heard a coach really talk about a player the way they talk about him. He is, he is a hard worker. Uh, he's obviously a team captain. He's a guy that, you know, just loved by everybody on this team. He is just a, uh, he's a great football player and uh, sounds like a great kid as well. And I think I'd run to his side too. Uh, he's pretty strong from what Nick Hill tells us. I, like, I think he's probably pound for pound the strongest kid 
in the country. Ben benches, we made him stop. I mean, he's, you know, squats 800, benches probably 520. Um, and so he, he's, a, he's a unique kid. He's pretty strong. Gosh, I can't even <laughs> fathom it. I'm surprised the bar didn't get bent. That's impressive. <laughs> First and 10 for Nick Baker in Southern Illinois. Baker's going. Steps out at the 14. There he is, there's Xavion. Yeah, he's he's a big boy. And, uh, you know, the run game kind of, you know, they like to run the football to the left when they can. He's, he likes to kind of lead the charge. Uh, he's just uh, just an impressive young man. I can imagine just an unbelievable teammate. He's a really good football player. He's played a lot of football. So he's, uh, it's hard not to root for a guy like that. Second and four. They'll hand it off to Landon Lenore. And he is just eating up. TJ Smith was there along with Russ Yeast. This secondary just flies around. I mean, they are from sideline to sideline. When the ball is on the ground, they are running full speed and laying the hat. It's just, uh, it's fun to watch. You know, they, they don't stop. And that's one thing I wrote in my notes on Monday when I was started watching these guys play is there's always 11 guys to the football. And that says something about Coach Kleiman and his staff. That'll be the end of the first quarter. We have had a little bit of everything in this game so far. K-State playing in their first home game of the 2021 season. Some deep shots, some touchdowns. The Wildcats up 14. Getting set for the second quarter here in Manhattan. Nick Baker so far for Southern Illinois, two for seven for 20 yards. He had one interception. Skylar Thompson did leave this game with a lower body injury. We'll get you an update as soon as possible, but Southern Illinois has got third and three. Baker steps up in the pocket. Not much room to run. This pass rush is just relentless. They don't stop. Even though it's a three-man pass rush, it's a quarterback you think you have all day, but these guys just don't stop. They just continue to pursue the quarterback. That's a big stop there on third down. Yeah, Felix on you, DK Uzama. And it's a loss of one. So Southern Illinois will elect to kick the field goal. Nico Gualdoni, a 32-yard attempt. It's up and good. Southern Illinois has its first points of this game. And remember, on that drive, they went for it twice on fourth down and converted each time. That's exactly what you needed if you're Southern Illinois. You know, obviously you want to come away with a touchdown, but to convert on fourth down twice, to go the length of the field, to get points on the board in a game where, you know, there's a lot of momentum on that K-State sideline after, after scoring the last possession. So kind of get the... Get a little bit of rhythm back in that offense. That's a good drive, good start. There's a lot of football game left in this, in this game. So we will see K-State come back out on offense. Shane, do you have an update on Skylar Thompson for us? Well, Skylar Thompson was in the injury tent, I'd say about five to eight minutes as they worked on him. And then Coach Kleiman actually went into the tent. He was in there momentarily. When he walked out of the tent, that is when Skylar Thompson made his walk to the locker room. And just by looking at his face, it appears he was pretty emotional. Of course, he's had so many ups and downs here in Manhattan. We hope for the best with Skylar Thompson. Absolutely, we do. I mean, he was telling us about his journey. I've been the starter, I've been benched, I've been in a quarterback battle, I've had a season-ending injury, and he said, now I'm back for another year, and, and you, you hate to see him injured in this game. Yeah, you hate to see it. I mean, he's just, he's an impressive young man. He's, he's put in his time, he's worked hard, he's a leader of this football team. You just hate to, hate to see him go, go down this early in the season. Phillip Brooks, the dangerous return man for Kansas State. This is what he does. Wildcats are going to have great starting field position at their own 45. He's just a home run waiting to happen. He is a he is a big time threat back there with the ball in his hands. On offense, they want to get it to him however they can. This is last year versus Kansas. 
as you can see, right down the right sideline, pretty much untouched. He's just a uh, just a valuable asset back there. He's a, he's a game changer. He's an explosive guy with the ball in his hands. Two in one game. I'd say that's a home run threat, if you're asking me. Yeah, he was an All-American as a punt returner last year for K-State. Flag out, two flags out. Holding, number 70, offense, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's KT Levitson. These are the things that K-State traditionally does not do. They don't beat themselves. I mean, they're very, very fundamentally sound. You know, pre-snap penalties are really good at. Penalties like that, he's on the perimeter. That's a tough play. He just got away with, you know, trying to, trying to hold the guy on the perimeter. But this is a very well-coached, fundamentally sound football team. So Will Howard is the quarterback. Skylar Thompson went out with the injury. And he'll throw to that far side. Keenan Garber, his first catch of the season. Only two receptions in his career. Quay Brown was there on the tackle. And again, as we said, Will Howard has the starting experience. And he spent a lot of time with Skylar Thompson. I feel like that would be pretty valuable. It sounded like they were extremely close. And, and I think Will Howard really learned a lot. And, and being around him and, and playing, obviously, is there's no substitute for it. So having those reps are just invaluable. So he's been there. He's done it. And he gets a bunch of reps throughout the week. You know, I don't expect the offense to change. They're going to keep doing what they do. Howard's got time. Flushed out of the pocket. Still looking to throw downfield. Just overthrows <laughs> Phillip Brooks. James Caesar in coverage. And that'll bring up third down. <laughs> Was there another quarterback that that you really fed off of and learned from in your career? Yeah, you know, a guy when I was in Cleveland, I had Seneca Wallace, the great Iowa State yeah. quarterback, and just a just an awesome guy and, and a great leader. You know, he knew I was a first round pick, so I was probably going to be the starter, but he didn't care. He was always there, willing to help, and and uh, just a guy that I still have a lot of respect for and still close to to this day. He's just uh, he's as good as they come. It's, you need that as a young player. Howard over the middle of the field, Landry Weber! How about that throw? Good throw. Dig route, third and extra long. Those aren't fun. Those are the percentages say you don't pick those up very often. Uh, but he stood in there, delivered a good throw between the hashes. Great conversion on third and long. That is the first catch for Landry Weber since November 2019 against West Virginia. He was limited last season with injury. It is a 21-yard pickup. Here's that formation again. I like this. It just it clears things up for the quarterback. Jacardier Wright with the carry. Does that have to do with the defense not being able to disguise much? Or? Yes, yeah, so when you have that many guys in the backfield, your box gets cleaned up. So they're in a four down front. They have four down linemen. They have three linebackers. And everybody's kind of closer to the line of scrimmage. And then you know exactly what you have over the receiver, the two receivers to your left side. So it just visually, it just kind of cleans everything up for the quarterback. If we learn some play actions off of it, any type of run game, it's pretty self-explanatory. So that's, a, that's clearly a formation they're going to use a lot tonight. He flips Joe Irvin to his other hip and gives him the football. Irvin trudges over the 30-yard line. One thing I said coming into this, this game was the gap soundness of this D-line. They needed to be gap sound, you know, and, and that's not just the D-line. That's linebackers filling the right gaps. That's on blitzes, and that's, you know, playing with good gap control and in large part in the run game because as we know this is a pretty pretty explosive backfield with with Deuce Vaughn back there so you got to be gap sound you got to be on the same page you can't do your own thing if you do that chances are you'll have a have a decent chance for a good play Howard scrambling tucks it and runs just short of the first down but he is inside the 25 yard line well Southern Illinois has a lot of experience. They have 17 six-year players, and they've had some competition at linebacker that's pushed them even more. So veterans 
plus pushing each other to get better. It's a pretty, pretty good start for Southern Illinois. That's incredible. I mean, 17 guys to come back, I and mean, that says that says a lot about Nick Hill and what he wants to do with, with this program and the, and the respect they have and you know how much they like playing for him. He's just uh, he's a seems like a great head coach that uh, you know kind of has the support of his players. So you get 17 guys back. I mean, that's I mean that is just that's huge, especially with everything that's been going on with COVID and all the other things that uh, we've had to endure this last year. So yeah, that that's a huge benefit for this defense. Deuce Vaughn's carry just a yard short of the first down. It was Colby Coleman that held him up. Will Howard pulls it. First down and more inside the 15. That's the Deuce Vaughn effect right there. Yeah, that's a pretty simple read for Will Howard. He's just reading that defensive end. If he comes down the line of scrimmage, I pull it, and I try to get around the edge. The receivers are blocking on the perimeter. That's a great play call, great design. And you can tell they got their antennas up for number 22 when he's in the backfield. Yeah, that's a six yard pickup for Will Howard, the 10th first down of this game for Kansas State. And this time they will give it to Deuce. He can get around there. Yes, he can. I mean, look at his speed. That play should have been bottled up for a one or two yard game. Yeah. I mean, that just shows right there. I mean, he is he is explosive. And he when he turns that corner, watch out. He's got a different gear. That was a, he made a little bit of something out of nothing. That was a great run. And that was all number 22 right there. I mean, defenses just have nightmares about players like Deuce Vaughn, do they not? I mean. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, I can't imagine playing against them. I played against a few guys like that in my day, and you just get scared. I feel like it's a, home, it's a, it's a touchdown every time they touch it. Deuce pushing, pushing, looking for purple. Touchdown, K-State. Deserves that one. You have a run like the last play. Turn around and hand to again. I was always big on that. Give it to the guy again. He earned it. Give it to him. Let him get his touchdown. Good finish by the offensive line. Get a little extra push. Get him in that purple end zone. Tim plays 55 yards over about five minutes, and it's capped with a touchdown by Deuce Vaughn. Holding up this PAT attempt. Southern yeah. Illinois came out with the football. They're making sure that this was a touchdown. Yeah, it was a skirmish down there. It's hard to tell. I mean, there's bodies everywhere. Kind of gets stood up there, but it's just hard to tell. There's so many, but he sticks the football out, which is a little dangerous there, but it's just hard to tell when the ball comes out. That's, uh, there's a lot going on on that play. So there was one official that called it a touchdown and one that did not. So they are reviewing this as they look at every scoring play, of course. Well, Deuce Vaughn has just been hungry to learn this game and to be a part of this team and to have an impact. He's done that since he has stepped foot in Manhattan. Yeah, he, uh, you know, again, he's just a guy that, uh, He's just a football player. Like I said, he's 5'6", and we met with him yesterday. He's just a little rocked up guy. He's just, <laughs> just one big muscle. Got those big big quads. He's loaded to the ground. He's hard to tackle. I mean, he, you can just talk, when you talk to a guy like that, just how much he loves and how much he appreciates playing this game. And you know, all the, I mean, you can tell he's just a hard worker. He's a very smart guy. He's just, uh, man, he's fun to root for. He's just, uh, he's a great football player. He's got a bright future. And if I'm these teams in the Big 12, it, better watch out. It'd be tough to be a defense coordinator. So they do confirm the touchdown, and now Tatum Winkle on to attempt the PAT. Sneak.
takes it in there, 21 to three. Kansas State on top, a touchdown for Deuce Vaughn and the Wildcats. already making a statement early on in this one for K-State. They're up 21 to three. There were three players last year, Brandon, in FBS football that were able to rush for over 600 yards and catch over for over 400 yards. And Deuce Vaughn was one of them. But look at the company. Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, both first round draft picks. <laughs> That's pretty good company to be in. And those guys are going to Playing the NFL for a long time. They're both, you know, special, special backs. And, uh, you know, the versatility, I mean, that's something that, again, that's that's one of his biggest traits, I think, is just the versatility and his ability to do a little bit of everything, just like those other two guys. And, and uh, again, anytime you're mentioned along the same lines as those two first round picks, you're doing something right. Yeah, he's had seven carries for 47 yards and two touchdowns in this game for the Wildcats. once boomed back into the end zone and so we will get to see Southern Illinois come back on offense Kansas State up on the Saluskis 21 to 3. start this drive on their own at 25. Nick Hill is their head coach. He's in his sixth season as their head coach. Took over this team when he was 30 years old, but he knows the history of Southern Illinois football because he played quarterback there. Ironically, it was after he played one season of basketball at Western Kentucky, broke his hand, and then came back to Southern Illinois. Yeah, he, he had a great career there. I mean, he's, he got some big wins, and, and uh, he spent a lot of time at this university, so he knows what it's all about. And as a coach, he's He's doing his best to get this thing turned around. He's uh, He was an impressive guy to talk to. Nick Baker is his quarterback and immediately connects with Landon Lenore. And Nick Hill, I mean, obviously, it's got to be a benefit if you're a quarterback to have your head coach as a quarterback. He's had success when he was a quarterback against FBS teams, went 2-0, and defeated Indiana and Northern Illinois. And I love what he told us about Nick Baker. He was totally confident in his entire playbook with Nick Baker out on the field. That, I mean, that says a lot, not only the head coach, but the play caller. So he knows exactly what Nick Baker's feeling right now. You know, the game's not going you know, quite like they want yet. There's a lot of ball left. But he's been in this situation before as a, as a head coach and as a player. So the communication, whether we play calls or on the sidelines for adjustments, they're on the same page. And that's that's invaluable. That's big. If you can have that, that coach to quarterback communication, I just think it's, I think it's something that uh, is extremely valuable. Ramir Elliott is the back right now. We didn't see him last week against SEMO. Oh, easy pass over the top to Tice Daniel, the tight end, the transfer from Memphis. They were fired up about Daniel. Haven't had a guy like him at tight end. Yeah, he does a little bit of everything. They ask a lot. You know, he got a, he's got in the line man of scrimmage. He's got the run game and then in the pass game. They expect him to do a lot. He's a big, versatile player and, uh, you know, he, he, should, he kind of pops off the tape. He's a, he's a very athletic tight end. And they like to get him get him mixed in there. Elliott on the carry, a pickup of two. Well, that seam route they hit him on right there, but that's kind of the way you got to attack this defense. You know, that, that little void kind of between the numbers and the hash and the split safety defense is where, where in my opinion, they're a little bit vulnerable. Baker's got three at the top. Looking for Avante Cox, yes. Great play call. Kind of pumped a little bubble over there to the left. Little slip screen, the two two receiver slip screen down the boundary. Kind of a whole shot throw by Nick Baker. Great throw. Great job by Landon Lenore to hang on. That's a big hit. That's a, he's coming in hot. And uh, that was a. Uh, I'm sorry, that was a Vontae Cox. I got the number wrong. That was a. That's a great play. Good drive so far. Southern Illinois. So Nick Baker is at the bottom of your screen right now. They'll put Javon Williams out of the shotgun. They use this as a wildcat package. Saw it some in that first quarter. He can also throw the football. 
He'll run it here. You know, the hardest part about that play as a quarterback, you got to make sure you know the formation. Yeah. You're, on, <laughs> you're on the ball, you're on the formation to your receiver. So just one extra thing you got to study throughout the week. But, you know, this is, that's something they like to do. They like to do this wildcat, put him back there. He's a bruiser. He's a downhill runner, but he can still make you miss. So, yeah, this is something that Nick Hill really likes to do, and, and uh, they've had a lot of success with it. You know, I, I expect him to keep coming to it. Second and eight from the 13. Southern Illinois scored on their last drive, converted two fourth downs on that drive as well. Baker up at the top. Connects with Landon Lenore, a two-time honorable, honorable mention, all Missouri Valley Conference. Good throw, a little quick out to the boundary. This thing's got to be on time and on target. That's a good location on the throw. That, that's a scary one at times. Sometimes, you know, there's, there's, uh, those corners like to jump those if they can, but with soft coverage, easy free access, that's kind of pitch and catch, good accurate throw. Good throw by Nick Baker. Baker's favorite target, Avante Cox, is at the bottom of your screen. He's pressed. Williams. Enough for the first down inside the five. That's a good job by this offensive line, getting pushed. You know, really didn't get contact until he got about a yard downfield, so that's a good Good job, good job by this offensive line, like I said, getting pushed, kind of controlling the line of scrimmage on that last play. This offensive line returned all five starters who started their final three games. Remember, Southern Illinois played football in the spring. This is where K-State's pretty stingy. It's tough to score on them down here. Javon Williams. Bounces off the edge, leaping into the end zone, and Southern Illinois has its first touchdown. Unless you got Javon Williams. Yep. He's, he's a big boy. <laughs> I take that back. A great play call. Again, they're going to run this Wildcat. This is uh, something they like to do. This is kind of their identity. And uh, he bounces off that one tackle and does a little Superman into the end zone. Good cap to a great drive. Yeah, they knew that he had such a unique skill set anyway. Do you see Southern Illinois going for two? Oh, Baker in trouble. Trying to elude the pressure. Well, trickery, I like it. K-State had it defended. And yeah, Marius Brown was there. But how about a touchdown for Southern Illinois? Big Javon Williams pounds it in. It's Kansas State here in Manhattan. Of course, Southern Illinois coming from Carbondale, Illinois. They left Yesterday morning at 10 a.m., they got here last night about 6, 6.30, and they will be right back on the bus heading back home at the conclusion of this game. Courtney? Shane, that's a long bus trip, like seven-hour bus trip. How about that? That reminds me of minor league baseball. Yeah. I did not miss those days. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But. That was a really nice drive, though, by Nick Baker and his offense. That was. That was exactly what you needed at this point in the game. Uh, you know, this, like I said, there's a lot of football left here. So you just got to be patient. Kansas State's a good football team. They don't beat themselves. So you just got to be patient and kind of take what they give you. And Malik Knowles will take a knee in the end zone. Kansas State coming out to the 25-yard line. Well, if you're just joining us, Will Howard has come in at quarterback. Skylar Thompson went down in the first quarter with a lower body injury. Will Howard was their starter for the majority of last season, and it helps when you have so many weapons around you, too. No question. And I think he, you know, he's got to rely on them. You know, he doesn't have to make every play in this game. Just distribute the football, find your playmakers, and let them do the dirty work. And he's got plenty of them around him. There's one of them, Deuce Vaughn. Oh, and the ball comes out. The ball comes out, and it's scooped up by Belizari. Giannini Belizari. Exactly what Southern Illinois needed. Get that sideline going. They're jazzed up over there. 
Great field position inside the 10-yard line. You just don't see that very often out of K-State football teams. Yeah, I know Deuce Vaughn's a great player. He's obviously still a young player, but he's going to learn from this. Got to, got to take care of the football. And uh, those are the types of things that get you beat. But uh, they're going to keep handing it to him. He's too good of a player. But this is big for Southern Illinois. Yeah, I think it was Jordan Burner who popped the football out. What a play. That's the second takeaway by the Southern Illinois defense. They picked off Skylar Thompson in the first quarter. That's what it's going to take. If you're going to beat a team like Kansas State, you've got to get takeaways. You've got to find a way to get stops on defense. Your offense has got to capitalize. And now they're at the nine-yard line. They snap it to Javon Williams. He just had a touchdown and, wow, takes it to the one. He wants it again. You can tell. He did the dirty work there, bouncing off receivers. He's tough to bring down. He's a big-body guy, so he gets that pad level down. It's not easy to tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. And this is where K-State's got to bow up. It's, you know, you got an unfortunate situation. You turn the ball over. They start with great field position, the sudden change, as we call it. This is, these, these defenses practice this all the time. they got to bow up and try to find a way to get a stop. Williams still out of the shotgun. Pounds it in. Back-to-back -to -back touchdowns for Javon Williams and Southern Illinois. Javon Williams punches it in, but it all starts with that defense. Getting the turnover, first play of the drive, sets up great field position, and Javon Williams does the rest. Wow, for Southern Illinois to get the turnover and then convert almost immediately. That is big time. And the PAT is good too. Watch out Kansas State, Javon Williams into the end zone again. The Southern Illinois defense with its second takeaway. Big Jordan Burner popping this football out. It's exactly what Southern Illinois needed. Crunch time, they're down two scores. They get a big turnover, and Javon Williams does the rest. Look, Kansas State's just got to regroup. This is, a, this is normally a very fundamentally sound football team, so there can't be any panic. And this is, you know, they've got plenty of playmakers to, to kind of do what they need to do. They just got to settle down regroup one play at a time and it starts with this drive. Ball comes to Malik Knowles. He's going to try his hand with it. All right, Brandon, how much does it matter? Your starting quarterback for K-State is not in the game. He is the leader of this offense. How do you regroup without that leader? You know, this is where, you know, maybe an offensive lineman, another leader on this team just kind of got to step up. I mean, this, it just, it just like, get kicked in the gut. You lose your starting quarterback for one, but then it's your vocal leader, your veteran leader. You know, so somebody, one of these seniors, these, these veteran guys, these super seniors, as we're calling them, has got to step up, be that vocal guy and say, look, we're going to be all right. Will's played football. Let's get back to doing what we do and control what we can control. And, uh, you know, that that's on the senior leaders. So. And I expect them to do that. You know, there's a bunch of really good players, a bunch of really veteran players on this team. And so I expect them to, to kind of rally and kind of get some of that momentum back on that sideline. Yeah, this offensive line is really experienced. They return all five starters. We got to talk to Noah Johnson yesterday. He's one of the captains. He's out there. He'd be a perfect guy. I mean, just after talking to him, I mean, I'd run, I'd run through a brick wall for the guy. Yeah. I mean, he's just a, he's a great leader. Uh, just loves ball. He's a tough guy. So. I think it starts there. It starts with that offensive line. Howard looking to throw just off of the fingertips of Deuce Vaughn. Pass incomplete. Just a little out front there. Ran a little angle route with Deuce to try to get him matched up on that, that linebacker. We call it a little angle route. He kind of sells the flat and kind of breaks across his face toward the middle of the field. And just a little, just a little out of reach for Deuce. But that, that had a chance to be a pretty big play. So third and long here. Now, what are you looking for if you're Will Howard in K-State? This is, again, when you're this long, these are tough, obviously. You know, there's, there's two theories of thought. Either expect pressure or expect kind of a prevent, kind of a more safe keeping front. And uh, they're just bringing four. 
Howard will fire a pass and it's intercepted into the hands of P.J. Jules. All the way home. P.J. Jules pick six. And it's back-to-back -back turnovers by K-State. This one just gets away from him. Ball kind of sails on him. That's, that's an easy play. You know, P.J. Jules is right there to make it. And uh, there's really nobody in front. Yeah, that this one's, uh, you know, we've all been there. If you played the quarterback position, we've all made those throws that kind of get away from you. Um, like I said, you got to regroup. you got to settle down. I know this, it's not a, a perfect situation you're in. you got to find a way to settle down and uh, get back on track. Get some easy completions for your quarterback and get him back in the rhythm. Nico Gualdoni is on to attempt the PAT as Southern Illinois has taken the lead. They have never beaten a Big 12 opponent. You can hear a pin drop in here right now, couldn't you? And this, you know, just the wind's kind of sucked out of the stadium right now. I mean, this, you know, we've all been there. If you played this game enough, you know, there's going to be some adversity. It's not going to be a perfect game. Especially as a quarterback, you're not going to play a perfect game. you, you got to have a short memory. Put it behind you. On to the next one, on to the next one. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Coach Kleiman and that offensive staff will, will pull, Will, pull Will Howard aside and say, hey, look, man, settle down. We got you back. And uh, kind of get back on track. So they're reviewing the scoring play. That's what's taking so long. You see Nick Hill, Southern Illinois' head coach, talking to the official over on that far sideline. I mean, it was a great play by P.J. Jules. So now Gualdoni will get his chance. Look, we knew Southern Illinois had playmakers. We saw them on offense, saw them on defense too last week, and they've made big time plays on back-to-back -back drives, taking it away from K-State. Yeah, just uncharacteristic. I mean, just, you know, throughout the years, this has always been a K-State team that has just never beat themselves. They've never really turned the ball over. They hardly ever have any, you know, pre-snap penalties. They're very fundamentally sound, well coached. You know, when you come in here, you know you got to beat K-State. They're not going to beat themselves. And so far in this game, that's the difference. Turnovers, and, uh, you know, now we got a, we got a two-point game, and, and the game's kind of getting away from them. So, yeah, they got to get back to what, they're, what they, you know, traditionally do is uh, take care of the football and, and uh, control what they can control. Well, we saw last week six FCS teams beat FBS teams. I think the most shocking one was Montana taking down Washington, but it can be done. And Shane shared with us what Chris Kleiman told his guys, you know, don't look at the name across the jersey. Be ready, be locked in. And right now, Southern Illinois has the lead. And he knows best. He's been there, done it. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure that was his message all week. You know, he's gone into some hostile environments and got some big time wins at some of these smaller schools. So we've seen it across the country. I mean, you know, there's a bunch of talent on all these, these FCS teams. So you can't overlook them. You got to come in and play and, and uh, you got a target on your backs. So you got you to give them your best. So K-State gets another chance to come out here on offense. Last two drives, they have turned the ball over, and Southern Illinois has scored both times. Yeah, I think if, you know, if I'm Courtney Messingham and I'm the offensive coordinator, I just want to kind of give Will Howard a rhythm. You know, those easy completions. I don't care if it's a screen, you know, a little hitch, a slant, something just kind of get him moving. Get a, get a positive play here on first down if you're going to throw it, and just kind of get him back in the rhythm, get him to settle down a little bit. And uh, you know, got kind of get that get that rhythm back in this offense. They haven't had these last few drives. He'll hand the ball off. Jacardier Wright. Yeah, that's a good run by Wright. Two yards short of the first down. Will be Coleman in on the stop. This is a good formation for him. They ran this play a few times tonight. You got three backs. You got three tailbacks. Not even the fullbacks. So you're in 30, essentially 30 personnel. And so it's tough on the defense. You got a little. Two backs leading the leading the way for essentially a sweep. You got guys out in front. Get the ball in your playmaker's hands and see what they can do. Second and three here. Deuce Vaughn coming across the field, picks up the first down. When we talked to Deuce yesterday, he really likes running routes and catching passes. 
Yeah, he loves it. I mean, he wants to run more of them, it seems like. You know, that, that right there, they went back to that angle route he missed earlier. Hit, you know, Will kind of let him up the field a little too much. They went right back to it. Big completion for him to get a first down. Yeah, he's a guy that can run routes. He's got great hands. He's just savvy. He's just a savvy football player and, and a guy that uh, they got to find a way to get him give him the ball as much as they can. Pass complete to Malik Knowles, and it's another first down for Kansas State. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. You throw an angle route, nice little easy pass. You're throwing the ball five yards. You come back, the next time you throw it, you throw a little stop right to the bound, stop route to the boundary with free access. That's pitch and catch. That's exactly what you need to do to kind of get him back in that rhythm and get him comfortable, get him the confidence he needs on this drive. Howard's got two targets on either side and overthrows Malik Knowles. It looked like there was a miscommunication there as Knowles threw his hands up. Yeah, it was hard to tell there. You know, it looked like he came, kind of came back down his stem, which means he comes right back down the route he just ran. And I think I think Will Howard was kind of thinking he was going to turn in. So, yeah, a little miscommunication. That's, that's just not playing together a ton. You know, it's been a while since they've been on the field together. Um, but still, you're in, you're in a good spot. You're in midfield, second down. If you're going to throw it again, just – just the easy ones. You don't have to. You don't have to throw the ball down the field and get chunks every time out. And Southern Illinois is going to call a timeout. Yeah, this offensive line. This is you know it's kind of the backbone of their team. You know that's kind of that's their identity. They're big, tough, they're gritty. You know they, they play well together. They're a close knit group. You know and so I think you know they got to be the guys that kind of say, hey, look. Let's put this on us. Let's run the football. Let's see what we can do. And, uh, you know, I expect them to do that. I, I think that's that they're, they're wired that way. And uh, you know, I think it starts with Noah Johnson, you know, being the vocal leader of that, that unit. Yeah, and Shane, we got to talk to Noah yesterday. He was awesome. What makes college athletics so fun is everybody's got a story, everybody's got a journey. And his is very interesting. Spent a couple years at junior college and was burnt out. He transferred to Kansas State, did not plan on playing football, but he took a season off and he got that itch back. He did not want to ask himself, what if, in 15 years? So he put 60 pounds back on that he lost when he wasn't playing, and they moved him to center, a position he'd never played. Now he is an anchor on that offensive line. He will never have to ask himself, what if? And one of the captains says, oh, wow, Will Howard almost intercepted again by Bryce Notary. That's scary. Throwing the ball late over the middle to a running back that's matched up on a linebacker. It's pretty pretty clear he didn't he didn't see Bryce there in the middle of the field. Felt a little pressure internally, kind of got didn't have his feet underneath him. Those are those are tough. You want to get the ball out and you don't see you don't see everybody. It's hard to see all 11 guys, but got to regroup. Got to settle down and got to get ahead of the chains. Third and 10 from the K-State 49. Malik Knowles to keep her by Howard. What's your favorite kind of dog? <laughs> Hi, welcome to my podcast. Yeah, this is cool. This is a little three by O formation. Got an attached tight end to the yeah, left. So we're talking about he motions football. over. You got Malik Knowles coming in a jet sweep, so it's basically a zone read on the fly. This is a good design. It looks like K-State's going to go for it right here. What do you think about this? You know, I like it. Let's get some momentum. Let's make a play. You know, you got veteran guys all over this field. Somebody needs to step up and make a play. This is uh, it's a big play. You got a minute 19 left in the half. This is a big play in this game. Do you know my Lord? So they call a timeout. Kansas State will here, looking like they're going to go for it on fourth down. Ball is at the 45-yard line in Southern Illinois territory. Will Howard has had a couple of shaky plays here. Where would you go looking at what K-State offensively has done recently? Yeah, you know, last week when we got in these situations around midfield, Southern Illinois likes to kind of heat you up. They like to play quarters, which is four basically DBs across, and they like to bring the pressure to the field, which would be from the quarterback's right. So if they decide to bring a little pressure, you know that it should be picked up with the slide of the offensive line going out to that blitzer. So protection should be clean if, if that's the blitz they decide to run. Now I'm just looking for my best matchup. You know, who do I like? If it's one-on-one -on -one matchup right here, you know, you got Malik Knowles down here on, the, on your left side. If you get single high coverage, I wouldn't be sh shocked if you come down here. 
Howard looks up to the top of the field and connects to Landry Weber. They convert on fourth down. Good play. They end up doubling Malik Knowles down here in the corner. They, they went cloud to the boundary, which means they're two over one over number four down here. He had soft coverage to the field. Good job by Will Howard, recognizing that and getting the ball out for a big fourth down conversion. Oh, and Howard just got lit up and coughed up the football. Southern Illinois ball. Kevin Glacian. Belazari there too. That was a hard hit taken by Howard. Yeah, Noah Johnson just gets beat with the swim move. Yeah, you can't give up. This is tough. You know, if you're if you're Will Howard, you get that pressure. Sometimes it's just best to to go to the ground, take the sack, move on to second down. Yeah, this is a play that, as a young player, you just have to learn from. It looks like he's trying to throw it there, but the ball kind of comes out. It's kind of an awkward little little pitch, little throw there. The play's going to stand. It was a turnover. Wow, so 59 seconds on the clock. Southern Illinois has one timeout, and they have the lead on Kansas State right now. Baker dropping back. Out of the pocket he goes. And just misses Landon Lenore. Yeah, I was surprised they didn't take a shot there. Sometimes when you get a big turnover around midfield, a lot of tendencies for these offensive coordinators are to take a shot. You could tell K-State was ready for it. They were in a two-deep safety, kind of not letting anybody get behind them. So that was that was kind of what K-State was anticipating as well. So you got stacks out here to the side. You got a lot of space in the middle of the field. And they'll run it. It's Justin Strong if you were the guy picks the up the first down. And you know this K-State defense, too, is keying in on where Avante Cox is, number 11 in white, because he is one of Nick Baker's favorite targets if they did take a shot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's, he's their go-to guy. He's their home run hit on, hitter on the outside. Baker using his legs. Wrapped up by Reggie Stubblefield. So this is this is the this is a good situation. 35 yard line. You probably need another, let's call it eight, ten yards to get into a comfortable field goal situation. So, you know, as a play caller, as a quarterback, you know that. So, you know, if you get seven points, great. But if we can come away and we can get a field goal, you gotta consider that a good way to go into halftime. So if I'm playing quarterback here, I'm expect, expecting a lot of soft coverage, maybe some some double teams, especially on Avante Cox, you know, and Landon Lenore. They're not gonna let those guys get down the field. So it may be a check down to the middle of the field. You've got plenty of time, you know, so you don't have to throw the ball deep down the field. You can still check it down. So, you know, this is a this is a tough situation to play defense because it's like, okay, I'm not going to give up a home run touchdown, but I also can't give up 10 yards because now, now they're in field goal range. So, you know, K-State may come out. They may, they may play some man-to-man -man coverage to make it tough on, on the Southern Illinois offense. So this is a, kind of a, a chess game. You know, yeah. chess, versus, you know, chess versus chess here. So this is a... It's a good, uh, it's a good situation. These are the situations that are fun. Looks like they're, they're top in the slot there, number two. Southern Illinois, no timeouts left. Here goes Baker. And yeah, he was looking, staring down Avante Cox, pass incomplete. Julius Prince for K-State. Yeah, Avante slipped. He's trying to run a little, little deep out there and kind of slips coming out of his break. So Nick has to kind of Kind of hitch, kind of pump fake there. That stuff, you're out of rhythm. You got to force it to the sideline. So, just the timing, a little bit off there, but no hurt. Throw the ball away, no big deal. It's third down. You got 28 seconds left. I'm interested to see what K State dials up on defense right here. Looks like they're going to do what they do. That three, three, five. They're going to double down here on Devonte Cox. Baker, no chance. Khalid Duke. What a play. A loss of nine. It's exactly what K-State needed. Three-man rush. You got an, an elite pass rusher on the side. You're one-on-one -on -one with the right tackle. And they don't have any timeouts left. Clock going down. Yeah, that's going to do it. Khalid Duke, a throwdown of Nick Baker. And that stops Southern Illinois from tacking any more points on the board. But 
Brandon, Southern Illinois has forced four turnovers. I can't tell you the last time I've seen a K-State team do this, turn the ball over. It's just very uncharacteristic. But you got to tip your hat to Southern Illinois. They are flying to the football. They're, the ball is being batted in the air. And when you're able to do that, usually good things happen if you're on the defensive side of the ball. So K-State's got to go regroup. Southern Illinois has to find a way to keep getting these turnovers because right now that's the difference in this game. 23-21, Southern Illinois on top of Kansas State at the half. K-State losing their quarterback, Skylar Thompson, in the first quarter of this game. Southern Illinois has taken advantage of every mistake that K-State has made, and their head coach, Nick Hill, is standing by with Shane. Coach Hill, we knew it was going to be a dogfight. Speak to the efforts of your Salukis. Yeah, I, I'll never question these guys. They play with a ton of passion and energy. We went down 21 to three. We said, we're, we, if we got to come back, we get a lead. We've been in this position before. I told our six year seniors, I think we've been up at halftime versus all the FBS schools we played in the last five years. So it's really about finishing. These guys got on the bus to drive nine hours to win the game. So we got to close out this, uh, this game. We got the ball coming out. We got to get in a better rhythm in offense. I think obviously our defense with those turnovers and scoring is important. We can do better. We can we can get in a better rhythm on offense. Enjoy the second half. Thanks for the time. All right, appreciate it. And Nick Hill, please, with this group, as you said, they will get the ball to start the second half with the lead in Manhattan, Kansas. Southern Illinois on top, 23 to 21. Look at this score, Southern Illinois on top of Kansas State, 23-21 at the half. Southern Illinois has benefited from forcing four turnovers. Courtney Lyle, Brandon Whedon, Shane Sparks also with us. Wow, what a performance for Southern Illinois. It doesn't help too for K-State that Skylar Thompson left the game with an injury in the first quarter. Yeah, you know, that just kind of takes the wind out of the sails if you're, if you're K-State and you're on that sideline. Your leader, your quarterback, that's just tough to overcome, but they got great leadership. They got a great coaching staff. They got a great head coach. So I expect them to, to kind of come up, overcome it. But the difference in this game is turnovers. You turn over four times, it's hard to win football games, and they got to get that cleaned up here at the half. Yeah, early on, I mean, Kansas State looked really solid, and they picked up an early lead. Deuce Vaughn had the touchdown there, but then Skylar Thompson gets hurt on this play later on. Yeah, you just hate to see it. You know, it just sick to your stomach. If, you know, if you're a football fan and, and you follow K-State, he's such a great player, great leader. So, yeah, it's, it's you hate to see that happen. Yeah, so Will Howard comes in and takes over at quarterback. He gets a score. Deuce Vaughn will pick up another score. But things get a little bit shaky. Deuce Vaughn coughs up the football here. That's a rare sight. Yeah, you know, but he's your best player. You have to find a way to give him the ball. Don't give up on him. You know, continue to use him, and, and uh, you know, he's your best player. Keep beating number 22. Then it was P.J. Jules with an interception and a touchdown, picking off Will Howard. Southern Illinois able to capitalize on these four turnovers. They scored 13 points off of those turnovers. Remember, they trailed 21 to three. Now they've got a three, two-point lead in this game. Start of the third quarter here in Manhattan. Courtney Lyle, Brandon Whedon, Shane Sparks with you. K-State with some work to do, but it will be Southern Illinois who gets the ball first. And they will start on the 25-yard line. Let's go down to Shane. Well, you can imagine, guys, that Coach Chris Kleiman was not very happy. They were up 21-3, to three, four turnovers, couldn't tackle. He said you gave them hope, and now you got yourself one heck of a ball game. As far as Skylar Thompson, he said he will not be back. He'll be reevaluated, but definitely not coming back tonight. He's got that young quarterback, Will Howard. He said, you've done it before. Play within yourself. Keep your confidence. Guys, put your seatbelt down. This second half is going to be one heck of a ride. Yeah, Will Howard's got the experience, Shane. He started their last seven games games of the season, but it is tough to be in this situation down in your home opener, and the momentum is with Southern Illinois right now. Absolutely. You know, at halftime, you know, it's pretty quiet in here. You know, so K-State, somebody's got to step up, make a play, get this crowd back into it. That's one of the luxuries of playing at home. 
They'll fake it to Justin Strong and Nick Baker rolling out and throwing. Pass incomplete to Landon Lenore. What do you like most about Nick Baker? You know, just composure. You know, he made the early mistake through the turnover. You know, his numbers, he hasn't, he's only thrown it, what, now that's his 14th pass there. You know, so he hasn't, you know, been asked to do a lot, but, you know, his composure. He just stands in there. He's cool, calm, collected. Nothing's too big for him. So for him, st you know, stay the course. You know, keep continuing to get the ball to his playmakers. And uh, when you have a chance to hit a big one, you got to hit him. And he's got a lot of playmakers in this Southern Illinois offense. Hand off to Justin Strong falling forward. Pick up about three. Good job on first and second down by this K-State defense. You know, momentum-wise, you just feel it. They need to make a play here. You know, get a stop, force a punt. And there's a flag, two flags, way downfield. I think we're going to get a substitution penalty. K-State had quite a few guys on the field. It was on you, DK Uzama, who got there on the tackle, but we'll wait and see what the call is from Chris Talent. Illegal substitution on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot, third down. And we saw last week, K-State is rotating in a ton of guys on defense to try to keep them fresh. Yeah, in, in a time that most teams do that is on third down. You want your, your designated pass rushers, you want your guys to kind of get out to the quarterback. You know, Nick Baker took a took a page out of the Aaron Rodgers playbook right there, try to, try to get them with more guys than 11 on the field. Hopefully they don't call it, take a shot and uh, get a free play. Uh, but they were able, you know, unfortunately for Nick Baker, they blew the whistle and, and uh, wasn't able to get the playoff. One and two, Daniel Green back out on the field at middle linebacker for K-State. He was out due to targeting for the first half. And there's a flag. That's a big Full boost for this defense. Number 59, offense, five yard penalty, third down. Yeah, that's a big boost for this defense. You can tell he's he's trying to get those guys going. He's he's kind of the, the exciting leader. Uh, plays with a lot of passion, so you know, they're lucky to get him back in the second half. Third and seven coming up for Southern Illinois. Bunch formation at the top for Nick Baker. He's got Justin Strong with him in the backfield. Baker, plenty of time overthrows Landon Lenore. That's good coverage. He tried to force the corner route. That's just good coverage by K-State. They, they bottled up. They kind of played four over three, four defenders over the three-man bunch at the top of the screen, and uh, just kind of tried to force that one on third down. Well, that's back-to-back -back stops now for K-State's defense because, remember, Khalid Duke got a big sack to end that last-minute drive by Southern Illinois before the half. Yeah, you got to think that kind of gives them the momentum maybe going into the half, kind of sparks them, sparks some energy, get them going. You know, this is a good defensive football team. Kansas State's kind of built. That's kind of the way they're wired. You kind of hope that, you know, that, that energy feeds off on the offense and they come out and, and do something from that three and out. Flags out again. Before the play clock expired, timeout. Southern Illinois, their first charge of the half. 30 seconds in length. If you're Nick Hill, I don't know if you like spending timeouts on special teams, especially right out of the half. You know, those, those are precious, especially in these tight games like this. You, know, you want to try to hold on to as many as you can. You dang sure don't want to do it on special teams. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's not really how you draw it up. But, you know, again, got a tip or cap to the K-State defense, came out and started fast. Well, we heard Nick Hill tell Shane Sparks at the half that, look, our guys have been in this situation before. We have been up on FBS teams at the half. We just haven't been able to hang on. Can they hang on today? You know, he said that when we met with him on Thursday. You know, just being able to play 60 minutes and finish games. And that's, uh, that's kind of been their issue in these big time games. Phillip Brooks lets it roll. So this was back in the first quarter. If you're just joining us, Skylar Thompson, Shane gave us the update, is out for the rest of the game. It was just a non-contact thing on, on this play in the red zone. Gosh, you know, and I've seen this 
so many times over the course of my playing days, and anytime it's a non-contact injury like that, you just you just hope for the best. And uh, got a chance to talk to him yesterday. He's a special, special young man, and uh, he, uh, you know, it's, it's again. I'm a fan. I'm I'm a huge fan of Skylar Thompson, and, and I'm pulling for him. I'll hand it off to Deuce Vaughn up the middle. Brandon, you've been in situations like this before, big games. Is there one that comes to mind, big games, and you were able to turn it around? Similar. You know, it, my senior year, we went down to Tyler Field and played Texas A&M. It was the first Big 12 game that year for us. And I think it kind of catapulted us into the, the later part of the year. But we were down 20 to 3, I believe, at the half. Uh, just couldn't get anything going offensively. I turned it over, I think, once. We fumbled once and, and uh, made great adjustments at halftime. Came out in the second half, played fast, and uh, you were able to kind of get back, and we ended up winning a big game for us. We'll see if K-State can do just that with Will Howard at quarterback. On the keeper and gets the first down. Branson Combs in on the stop. Nice little wrinkle. They've gone to that three-back set, kind of faking that, that stretch zone with the two lead blockers. They've ran several times tonight. And Will Howard keeps that one and gets a big first down. K-State's just got to take care of the football. They have had four turnovers tonight. That is the most in a game since they had five in 2013 against Oklahoma State. You just don't see it very often. It's very uncharacteristic of this of this program and, and kind of the way they are wired to, uh, to play the game. Dumps it to Knowles. Good play. Really good job by Will Howard there with pressure in his face. Nice job of standing in there. They fake the jet sweep to Malik Knowles. Pressure's in his face, delivers a good throw. Nice play there on first down. That's the kind of rhythm you need to get in to kind of get him, get him going in this game, kind of get him comfortable and get him confident as this game progresses. Now Malik Knowles, they love his playmaking ability. We've seen them give it to him in that jet sweep, but then also, as we saw, he can go down and stretch the field too. That's why he's so dynamic. They just, they just want to get him the ball however they can get it to him. He's just a... He's the home run threat for him, and he's the guy that uh, they've got a lot of confidence in. First down, thanks to Deuce Vaughn. Calhoun gets there first, but the chains will move for the Wildcats. I expect a heavy dose of this. You know, hand it to Deuce Vaughn, throw it to Deuce Vaughn, get the ball to him. I mean, he, he's your guy. And, uh, you know, I know he, he had the fumble, but I've played with plenty of backs, running backs, that, you know, fumble early in the game that it's very uncharacteristic, and it just lights – Kind of lights a fire, and then they go out from that play on and just flip a switch and and uh, usually take over the football game. Phillip Brooks takes the football. Again, Calhoun is there. Picks up three. Up to the 43-yard line of K-State. You can tell this was a point of emphasis this week on, on offense. You know, they want to get the ball outside not I mean there's been some runs up the middle but they like those those stretch plays those outside zone plays whether it be from a formation like this this three back set or a jet sweep motion they're trying to get the ball in the perimeter and get guys out in front to kind of lead the way just like this and there goes Cartier right what is it about this defense that K-State likes to do that against them yeah, you know, I think it's the four-down look. You got you got a, a a linebacker kind of walked out over the wide receiver, so he's out there. But when you do this, you have two lead blockers, so you're able to lead the way, set the edge with the, the tackle, whether they're running right or left, and you still have two lead blockers coming out of the backfield. So from a numbers perspective, you just you have great numbers. It's it's to me, it's just a they say it's kind of a, a, a juicy look. They like to they like to run it where you're not, and you have two guys leading the way like that. Usually, big plays happen. Here comes Malik Knowles. Again, they're not trying to confuse you. They're, you know, they're, they've kind of run a lot of the same plays just to start the second half. They're just trying to get the ball in the perimeter, get the ball in their playmaker's hands. Hopefully he gets a crease, puts his foot in the ground, and gets north and south. But yeah, you can tell this is one of the adjustments that Kansas State made at the half is we're going to run the ball outside. If we do some zone read, it's going to be off the outside zone versus maybe the inside zone, especially here early in the third quarter. Yeah, Courtney Messingham is their offensive coordinator, took over this offense solely starting in the spring. Usually Kleiman has a little say, but handed it to him. They hand it to Deuce. One of the better runs we've seen from Deuce Vaughn. This is so hard on the defense, seeing jet sweep after jet sweep, fake the jet sweep. 
hand the ball off inside. You get, get those linebackers kind of looking sideline to sideline. This time you have a nice little wrinkle. Hand it to Deuce Vaughn up the middle. He goes untouched for a big game. This is the kind of offense that Kansas State wants to run. This is the, you know, 22 is their player. Deuce Vaughn is their guy. Just find different ways to get him, get him the football. That's a 13-yard pickup for the Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year last year. I'd give it back to him, too. He's hard to take down. He is. He's low to the ground. His, his center of gravity is really low. He's got those big thighs. You know, and he, he runs with great pad level. You know, he's already obviously a little bit closer to the ground, so he, yeah. he keeps those pad levels down. But, but yeah, he is, a, uh, he is a good runner, hard runner. He's, 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 he told us he's quicker than fast, which I don't believe it. he's still pretty fast. So he's an uh, explosive player and uh, just very dynamic. He's very versatile in what he can do. Second and one. This is the ninth run play of this drive. They've only thrown it once. This time it's Joe Irvin. And hey, the run heavy calls are working. Why change it? I mean, you've got a great offensive line. You're kind of the backbone of this team, as I said earlier. They, they kind of are the identity you want on offense. Right now they're controlling the line of scrimmage. There's no reason to change it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And right now, that offensive line is kind of leading the way and doing exactly what K-State wants to do is ground and pound and run the football. That's the identity of this football team. First and 10 from the 15. Deuce thrown down, but not before. I think he gets back to the line of scrimmage by Jakari Patterson. Yeah, talking to Noah Johnson, the center on this offensive line, they heard all last year coming into the 2020 season about how they had no returning starters. They were the question mark. Well, they were tired of that talk. It's really brought them together, and now they all return, and they've got experience to help lead this team in a situation where your backup quarterback's in. Exactly. Most, uh, you know, most offensive line are usually the tightest knit group as far as the units go on the football team. They do everything together. And they're all they're all the same. It doesn't matter where they're from. They, they're kind of all wired similar. And uh, you can tell, just talking to Noah Johnson yesterday, that this is a tight-knit group. They have a lot of faith in each other. They've all got each other's backs. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if they went to, to who, you know, whether it be Chris Kleiman or Courtney Messingham and said, hey, look, we want to run the football. Let us win the football game for you. That's the identity that they want to kind of impose their will on this defensive front of Southern Illinois. So they lose three yards on that play. It's now third and 13. Little option look for Howard. He pitches it to Irvin. That's a good play by the Southern Illinois defense. They brought a pressure to the field off the slot, and then K-State runs an option away from it, which usually is a pretty good, pretty good you know, recipe. But they, they sniffed it out. Bryce Notry just sideline to sideline. The guy just flies around. That's a good play, good stop for the Southern Illinois defense. So this will be a 34-yard attempt for Tayton Winkle. And it's good. That drive almost seven minutes long for K-State. They get three points off it, and they take back the lead. K-State takes back the lead, a 14-play, 66-yard drive. It took seven minutes and 38 seconds on the clock. They get a field goal out of it, but one of the more sound drives and exactly what they needed, Brandon, after four turnovers in this game. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you can tell their, their message at halftime, we're going to run the football. 12 runs versus one pass. You can tell the message was pretty clear. Offensive line, buckle up. We're running right behind you. Ball falls over, so Ty Zintner will get them to set that back up for him on this kickoff. Now, how 
does Southern Illinois respond? They led at the half after trailing 21 to three. Southern Illinois coming up on offense. Let's go down to Shane. Well, this pin I'm holding in my hand here, Courtney, very special pin from Xavion Furquan, offensive lineman for Southern Illinois. It's a pin with the pictures of his sister and his mother. Just over two years ago in June of 2019, his mother, Melody, passed away from some medical complications at the age of 42. Less than 15 months later, last September, his 18-year-old sister, Zion, was tragically killed in a car accident. Was talking to Coach Shilley, said through all that adversity, he was still a pillar of strength, and he's one of the guys that would rally around the rest of his team. I talked to him before the game today. He said it is his faith that got him through it. Coach Shill said he is so impressed as he continues to watch Xavion impact those around him. Yeah, Shane, and we will see Xavion come out on this offensive line for Southern Illinois, the only captain on this team. Nick Baker and Southern Illinois ready to go here, looking to respond after K-State just retook the lead. Justin Strong on the carry. Daniel Green in there, the middle linebacker back in the game, of course, did not play in the first half due to a targeting call in their last game against Stanford. Oh, it's Landon Lenore. Boston out of there for the first down. I like it. They get on the ball, go fast, run a little end around, jet sweep to Landon Lenore around the edge. Makes the guy miss the space. That's that's a good way to start this drive. Get on the ball, play fast, dictate the tempo. Nick Hill repeated, repeated that over and over. They want to dictate the tempo, and you can tell that's their plan right now. A lot different than this K-State defense faced last week against Stanford. And Baker in trouble. What makes it so difficult to, to stop Southern Illinois? Because, I mean, they've had times where Nick Baker's brought them down the field. They've got a lot of weapons. Yeah, it's, you know, just watching them last week, one thing I put in my notes is you've got to cover the entire field. They want to throw the ball deep. They want to throw the ball in the middle. They want to run screens. They, so they make you run sideline to sideline. They make you cover the entire field. So that's a challenge in itself. And then secondly, you can't have eye violations. They like to do the RPO game, and that's kind of why Chris Kleiman and the staff went to this style of defense to try to eliminate some of those big plays on the RPOs. Landon Lenore again gets the call, third down coming as Cody Fletcher met him. Landon Lenore, the cousin of Laquan Treadwell, of course, an NFL wide receiver. They apparently have a group chat. They talk about football life. Him and, and his brother Lance also in that chat with Laquan. Not a bad resource. Absolutely. He's been at the highest level. Been around a lot of other really good wide receivers in his time in the NFL. He's got a bright future, he's a good player. Now it's third and four, Javon Williams out of the shotgun. Timeout, Southern Illinois. And that they've already used two now. Yeah, again, that goes back to that one on special teams. Now you're down to one to finish the game. Not ideal if you're Nick Hill. Um, but him being the play caller, he knows how big of a play this is on third down. This is a big play. He needs to dial, dial up, make sure the communication's right. This is just uh, you know, too big of a situation in the game to just have a play you're not real comfortable with. Well, in the first half, we saw them use Javon Williams a lot out of the Wildcat. I think this is the first time here in the third quarter that we've seen him come out of this package. Yeah, and, you know, he's been a guy that, you know, especially in those short yardage situations, he's been a guy that's been there to get those first downs. You know, the, the short yard, this is three and three, third and three, so it's a little bit longer maybe um, than they want, but uh, you know, it looks like he's in the lineup at, at quarterback right here. So, it, yeah, this is you know, this is where they like to use him, this Wildcat situation. He's a big, big back. You get an extra blocker with your extra, extra running back. Right now they're in two tight end sets, so this is kind of where they want Javon Williams to do the dirty work. Pulls it. 
doesn't convert. What a stop for K-State. Great play by T.J. Smith. Just coming downhill, taking Javon Williams on on the sideline. Gets a huge play right there around midfield. And they're going for it. They've converted twice on fourth down. They were both on the same drive in the first half. The kill's not scared. You know, he went for it twice earlier, right about this same spot of the field. They didn't make that nine-hour drive to come here and just to lay it out there. They came here to win this football game. They got a lot of confidence in him. Nick Baker back in at quarterback. Flag. Baker tries to toss it up to Justin Strong. There's a flag on the near side. And one at midfield. Brandon Massey for K-State was in there, a little quarterback pressure on Baker. Hello! It's Tyce Daniel there in there. There are two fouls on the play, both by the offense. The little shift. Number three and 17. That penalty is declined. An eligible receiver downfield, number 59. That penalty is also declined. The ball is turned over on downs. First down, Kansas State. Well, Kansas State keeps getting so much spark, so many sparks from their defense. Again, this is what they want to do. You know, this defense, they are built to run to the football, make big plays and big time plays. K-State have late in the third. A couple of penalties force a turnover on downs by Southern Illinois. So Chris Kleinman and his K-State Wildcats will start just over midfield in Southern Illinois territory. They had a great drive last time out that ate up seven minutes and 38 seconds on the clock. They got three points off of it. Deuce Vaughn, but again, the majority of that last drive, 12 run plays, one pass play. And a lot of that play right there, the, the faking the jet sweep. That just, that makes it tough on those linebackers because they have to be flat footed for that extra second just to make sure they're not handing that jet sweep off and you're able to kind of get push on the front to get to the second level. So yeah, you can tell this is, this is their plan. They're gonna run the football and they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna try to confuse you. They're gonna do it a, you know, a couple different ways. And that's one of them right there. Will Howard with Deuce Vaughn back there with him. He'll flip him over to the other side. Deuce again, first down, K-State. Good run by, by Deuce. Gets contact, falls forward. That's what you run out of a running back. You know, especially a guy of his stature, you want him always falling forward. That's what these running back coaches teach. And that's a perfect example of it right there. Southern Illinois, Southern Illinois tried to come after him there with a little pressure. But they were able to hand the ball off there inside and let their playmaker do the rest. Deuce Vaughn, a freshman All-American last season, over 600 rushing yards, over 400 receiving yards as Jacardier oh, Wright is tripped up by right. Jacari Patterson. Well, what kind of that, that last drive that we saw that took so long, they were really steady. What does that do for Will Howard, who's had to come in this game due to an injury to Skylar Thompson? It just settles him down. You know, you, those are kind of breather plays for the quarterback. So you, know, you call a run. You know, right here, you're a little bit behind the change. You probably need a little play to get back on track, which would be a screen or a draw or some type of play to try to get half of that back, but just to try to settle him down. You know, he, he hasn't hasn't played yet this year. He's got experience, uh, but they just want to get him comfortable and kind of get him in a rhythm. And they found a rhythm running the football, though they won't get much, if any, there because of Mikel Calhoun. <laughs> I love what... The coaches said about Mikel Calhoun, they said he's got a, just a little bit of a screw loose to go make a big play. <laughs> <laughs> I think all those guys on the defensive side of the ball have a little bit of a screw loose. That's that's why they play over there. They're crazy. They love to fly around and bang their heads around. But, no, that's a great football play right there. Uh, he does. He flies around. 
with le reckless abandon, and that's what you got to do if you're playing that position. You're playing in space like that. Great run through by him, and a good play on second down. Now third and long. Southern Illinois, the defense, Anthony Knighton, one of their veterans on the line. What? Let's check in with Shane. Well, you talk about Knighton, and his coach said he's just one of those guys. He leads by example. He's not a vocal leader, doesn't bring attention to himself, and when he makes a big play on third down, he just jogs off the field, but he makes a big impact, and we just saw an example of that. Yeah, absolutely. That is a big stop there, thanks to Anthony Knighton. And now fourth and way long. This is tough. This place, this whole series kind of started on that last first down. They get the tackle for a loss. Now you're behind the chains. They, they make a great play on second down to draw third, third and long. And that's, uh, that's good defense by Southern Illinois. So the third quarter goes pretty quick, but Kansas State, Will Howard and his offense able to take back the lead. They trailed at the half, but Kansas State trying to hang on and get a win in their home opener here in Manhattan. Kansas State on top by a point. Courtney Lyle, Brandon Weed, and Shane Sparks down on the field. And K-State getting ready to punt. Ty Zentner back to do the duties. Javon Williams to receive it. Oh, and almost downed inside the five. Well, this is the first time that Kansas State this season is playing at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And what a week for the legendary head coach Bill Snyder. He took to Twitter on Wednesday. How about this, guys? At 6 a.m. today, became a great grandfather for the fifth time. Granddaughter Sydney gave birth to a nine and a half pound baby boy. Congrats, Sid and Jay. What a big week for Coach Snyder. And then here is K State's first home game. But he means so much to this program and to the city of Manhattan. No question. And I got the privilege to play against Coach Snyder a few times. And and uh, he was just, it seemed like as a coach, he was always one step ahead. I mean, he just, you don't coach for that long unless you're a, a great football coach. And, and he was he was just that, you know, I got a couple really cool stories about him and and uh, during his time here and my time at Oklahoma State. So I got a lot of respect for, for him as a person and as a football coach. And there's a big pickup, a 19-yard gain, the pass complete to Landon Lenore from Nick Baker in Southern Illinois on the move. Backfield for Baker. Three wide receivers now on that near side. They look up at the top to Isaiah Hartrup. Julius Brents there, but not before Hartrup makes the grab. It's a great job on first down. You motion to a four, basically a four by one out of empty. So you have four receivers to your right and a single receiver to your left. Just a nice, easy little quick out there on first down, pick up six yards. Good throw by Nick Baker to get ahead of the chains. Elliott on the move. A couple yards short of the first down. Third down coming up. And going back to Bill Snyder, uh, I told you, Courtney, during the week, I wish I could have found him before I got here. But uh, after, the, after we play K-State, I get back home. And, and on Tuesday, usually of every week, you know, I'd, have that, I'd have a handwritten note in my locker uh, from Coach Snyder just telling me how good of a game I play, we play as a team, and I just have so much respect for the guy. Now, there's a big play on third down here, and I think there's going to be a face mask called as flags just went everywhere. Personal foul, face mask, number 31, defense. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Yeah, that's Jerron McPherson, and what a gain for Southern Illinois. That's a big penalty. Obviously, he's probably going to get the first down, but then you tack on an extra 15. Now Southern Illinois 
is driving here on the 35-yard line. Their entire playbook is still open. They're in a two-by-two -two set here with the back to the quarterback's right. Baker in trouble. McPherson responding with a takedown. A loss of seven. And what does Joe Klanderman does, do? He brings the pressure from the field. He's an aggressive play caller, the defense coordinator for K-State. He says, we gave you 15, we're gonna knock you back. That's a great job on defense, way to be aggressive. They dialed up a perfect pressure at the perfect time. Now second and 17. Devontae Cox is at the bottom of your screen. Nick Baker and Cox were high school teammates. And he's looking his way. Good throw. Just believes and knows he's going to catch the football. That is a tough throw. I mean, you got to throw it the perfect trajectory. It's kind of a hole shot, which we call it between the corner, between the safety on the sideline. Can't put too much air on it. The safety will come over there and clean him up. But this is a good job off the play action, drifting to his right. Those are just over the top of the corner's head. Great play, great catch. That's a big play. Now they bring up third and short. Pick up a 15. Cox still down at the bottom. They'll flip the tight end over. Elliott just needed two. I don't think so. Bronson Massey, hello. Goodness gracious, like a heat-seeking missile just coming off the line of scrimmage. That play had no chance. Great play by Bronson Massey. That, that's tough. If you're the running back there, there's just not much you can do. That's a great play in a crucial situation in this game. So Southern Illinois trots out the field goal unit. How's the wind down there, Shane? Super windy down here, guys. He is kicking into the wind. This wind has really picked up as the game progressed. And it's no good. It was a 47-yard attempt. K-State showing their strength with their defense. That is a big stop if you were the Wildcats. Chris Kleinman will like that. No points for Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois comes away with no points on that drive. They led K-State at the half, but Chris Kleinman's defense stepping up. They don't look tired. I mean, they look fresh and ready to go. I think that's in large part because of their depth. They've been able to rotate those defensive linemen, rotate the linebackers, and they've got plenty of guys in the secondary that can play. So, yeah, they look fresh. They're playing faster. They're, they're flying around. I mean, you can tell they've got a different, playing at a different speed in the second half. It's kind of becoming kind of infectious for this football team. Here's what Deuce. Look at him carrying big number 99 across for the first down. Good start. I mean, Kansas State's not trying to confuse you. What a, what a cut there. But, yeah, they're not trying to confuse you. I mean, they're just saying, hey, look, we're going to run the football. We're going to do it a couple different ways. We're going to line up in a couple different formations. But we're going to run the same runs. And when you got a guy like Deuce Vaughn back there to hand it to, that sure is a luxury if you're calling plays. Will Howard at quarterback. Skylar Thompson was injured in the first half. They go I formation. Fake it to Deuce. Oh, dangerous. They were looking for Malik Knowles, but Jakari Patterson inches away from an interception. Yeah, he's lucky this one got away from him. He threw it high because that one that one had bad things written all over it. That's, uh, you know, he's trying to force it. You know, he, had, he hadn't thrown the ball in a while. He's just trying to, trying to make a play to one of his playmakers and uh, just an ill-advised throw. Uh, you know, he's, again, we keep talking about it, but he's a, he's a young player, so he's still learning the position. He's still learning, you know, when it's okay to, to force things and when it's okay to, to maybe check it down, and, and he'll get there. He's, uh, he's a talented guy. Flag down as they hand the ball off. 
There's a penalty flag on this near sideline. Offense, five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty, second down. And one thing about this K-State offense that they like to do, they like to, they call it trading the tight end. So they take the two tight ends, they move them from maybe, let's say, the left to the right side, and then they may motion with the tight end. They may send all, so there's a lot of movement. There's, they're, they're changing the formation, the strength, which causes the defense to have to communicate. And right there you see not enough guys on line of scrimmage, but that's what they've done. They've done it all night. That's, what, that's how they like to play offense. And it makes it tough to communicate on defense. Deuce again. Around the edge and picks up a lot of yardage. It'll be third down, but it was second and 15. This is an interesting situation right here. You know, Will Howard made an ill-advised throw to the field there, trying to force the ball to Malik Knowles. And, you know, he's only 18 years old. He's, he's a young quarterback here in a, in a tight game here. You know, do you put the ball in his hands or do you get a, a higher percentage throw a quick throw to try to get it out of his hands and an easier completion, but that's tough on third down. So this is this is an interesting play call for Courtney Messingham. They've been going to Deuce too. He's got 93 rushing yards and a couple of touchdowns. Howard scrambling and has to throw it away. They tried to get Deuce up the sideline on kind of a wheel route. That's tough against zone coverage. That that route is kind of for more for man and. Uh, Good play by Southern Illinois to get a stop. Yeah, Richie Haggerty was in on the pressure as the wind picking up here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. K-State sends out Ty Zintner to punt. It's Javon Williams back for Southern Illinois. Calls for the fair catch. Southern Illinois had the lead at the half. They'll try to take it back on this upcoming drive. Well, yesterday, the presidents and chancellors in the Big 12 voted to accept BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF into the Big 12 conference. BYU is going to join for the 23-24 season. The other three will join no later than 2024. But, I mean, this is big to add some programs to the Big 12. And I think it's really cool BYU, who was an independent in football, is now coming into the Big 12. Yeah, no question. You know, I think these teams, you know, football, speaking of football, you know, in my opinion, a great ad. You know, they're all over the country. So, you know, these coaches have to love it for recruiting purposes. I think it's a, it's a must do for obviously the Big 12. Um, yeah, and I think you got to be happy with the four teams they were able to come up with. Javon Williams lined up in the Wildcat and just spinning his way closer and closer, but about two yards short of the first down. It's been a wild ride in Manhattan tonight. We saw Kansas State start off pretty strong. They had a 21-3 lead. Southern Illinois led at the half. And the pass low to Justin Strong out in the flat, incomplete. There's that throw you're talking about. They said he could throw it. Yep. Yeah, it's been, been, uh, been kind of like a, a bullpen pitcher, you know, or coming out of the bullpen as a relief pitcher. He's not real, real loose, but you know, they want him to have the football in his hands. That brings up a huge third down in this game. Nick Baker is back in there. And Javon Williams last season was 9 for 14 for 237 yards and three touchdowns. But they'll put the ball back in the hands of Nick Baker on third down. Neither team has converted on third down in this half. Ball's out. Daniel Green holding the football up. Felix on UDK. Uzama was there.
It was Anu DK Uzama who knocked the football out of Nick Baker's hands and then Daniel Green scooped it. There's the defense showing up again. Southern Illinois went to run a little RPO. They hit a big play on first down to, on the last drive. The Landon Lenore, a little, little slant route, deep slant route in the middle of the field. That time it's covered. They force him to hold on the football. In this K-State defense comes up with a huge play. Second turnover, K-State has forced. They'll get it at the nine. Deuce picks up a couple. Anthony Knighton in on the stop. I mean, thank goodness for K-State's defense. Love it. They're fun to watch. They have set the tone. And, you know, this is this is the way that this defense played last week against Stanford. I mean, they just flew around. And they played so much faster than Stanford did last week. And that was the difference. They held them to seven points. I think it was 68 or 69 yards rushing. 39. 30, I'm sorry, 39 yards rushing, which is just unheard of against a good Stanford run game. So, yeah, this is what you want to see if you're a K-State fan. Deuce breaks a tackle. Taken down by Colby Coleman. Third and goal coming up. This is a big play. You're already down here in six yard line. If you're Southern Illinois, do you want to set back, play your defense, or do you want to get aggressive and bring some kind of pressure against a young quarterback that hasn't played a ton of football and force him to, to get the ball out on time and it looks like that K-State's going to line up in a power formation. they have gotten three touchdowns in the red zone tonight. Howard rolling and throws it at the feet of Deuce. It's a good play by Southern Illinois. They line up in a two tight end set. They have a tight bunch and they want to run. As Coach Gruden wants to call it, it's a version of spider two wide banana. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Southern, Illinois, Southern Illinois does a great job of balling up and forcing Will Howard to kind of throw it away. So this will be a 24-yard field goal attempt for Tate and Winkle. No good. Wow, their defense forces the turnover, but Kansas State doesn't get any points from it. Still a one-point game. Kansas State just missed an opportunity to extend their lead. They're only up by a point. Their defense forced a fumble here on this sack of Nick Baker, Felix, and UGK Uzama forced it out. Daniel Green recovered it, but then you don't get the field goal, Brandon. Yeah, these are precious points. I mean, this is, uh, you know, especially in a game like this, you get those points, now you got to go down and score a touchdown to take the lead. So those are valuable three points late here in the fourth quarter. Nick Baker on the move. Dropped for a loss, Cody Fletcher. This defense is flying around. <laughs> this is fun to watch. These guys are playing with a little different edge here in the second half. And they're saying, look, if we need to, we'll put the team on our back. We'll go win this by ourselves. You can tell they are on a mission. The nice thing about this three down front, it just allows those linebackers who are so athletic to just run. Run sideline to sideline, trust what you see and go get it. Hand off to Justin Strong, his helmet comes off on the play. If you're Southern Illinois, this offensive line, what can you do? I mean, I mean you're right, all the gas, all the energy is with K-State. Yeah, you know, it's hard not to panic. I mean, there's still a lot of time left in this game. But, yeah, you know, you got to be good on first down. And whether that's throwing the football, like, with quick game or, you know, getting the ball out of Nick Baker's hands, I mean, you got to find a way to be good on first down. And, and when, you, when you get it lost, that, that kind of sets you behind the chain. So it's tough. K-State's playing well. Third and eight for Nick Baker. And again, Cody Fletcher. He wasn't letting him loose. Cody Fletcher has been everywhere. He is just, he's got a nose for the football. 
you know, that's that's exactly what Chris Kleiman likes from his, especially his linebackers in this system. They just like they like to let those guys go run. And he is a good leader, good linebacker for this defense. Yeah, his toughness, his persistence is the the thing that got him this starting position. And the coaches told us he's just quiet and correct. He does everything the right way. Those are the coaches' favorites. You, know, you don't have to worry about him. You know, you know what you're going to get come Saturday. They're going to be prepared. You know they're going to play hard. We've seen that tonight. Jack Cahoon punting and a very high snap. Kansas State coming back on the field, 5-16 to play. They lead by a point. Chris Kleiman knew coming into the season they had to improve on defense. We've seen some great defensive play from K-State. They're just playing with a different speed. They're flying around, they're flying to the football. They haven't changed what they want to do defensively, schematically. They're still in their three down front. It's just allowing these linebackers in this secondary to just run around and hunt. And they are flying to the football. And they have really played well, especially in this third quarter. And last time we saw this offense going to work was when the defense forced a fumble, but they didn't get any points off of it. And Deuce Vaughn will go back to the original line of scrimmage. Richie Haggerty, Haggerty in on the stop. Kansas State led 21 to three. Southern Illinois scored all 23 of its points in the second quarter. They led at the half. You know, two of those touchdowns came on a, on a short field. You know, so it's it's been tough on you know as far as the two score goes. That's tough on on this K-State defense, just given the fact that the field position for those two scores. Yeah, and Southern Illinois has benefited from four turnovers by K-State. They've scored 13 points off of those turnovers as the passing complete to Deuce Vaughn. Third down. Neither team has yet to convert on third down in this half. That's amazing. That is amazing. I mean, that's, you know, I'm an offensive guy, but you got to tip your hat to the defenses. And they've had a great game plan, you know, ever since this second half started. They've gotten in long deal. You've got third and ten here. You've been in some longer yardage situations. You know, that's just... Very bad execution by the offenses and uh, good defense by these defenses. Will Howard's got time to make a decision. Connects with Phillip Brooks. Beautiful throw by Will Howard. Good job of standing in there. Had great protection. Clean pocket. He was able to kind of diagnose it, go through all those progressions. Got a deep crossing route. Throws it on the money, and a big play on third down for Kansas State. Phillip Brooks was their leading receiver last week against Stanford with a career-high 81 yards. That's his first catch tonight. First and 10 from the 38 of Southern Illinois. Back to Deuce. He just stepped right over a defender. Look at him go for the first down. Oh, excuse me, it's Joe Irvin. Great push by this offensive line. Again, they're faking that jet sweep. They're trying to get, they're trying to show that they want to run the ball laterally and then just hand off a simple inside zone play for a big play, and that's that's exactly what you need. You want that offensive line to con control the line of scrimmage. That's exactly what they did right there. A 14-yard pickup for Joe Irvin in K-State. First and 10 from the 24. This is Deuce. Give him some room. down Wildcats. He's fun to watch, isn't he? He is twitchy. I, I can't imagine being a safety or a corner out in space, one-on-one, -on -one, trying to bring that guy down. I mean, I, that would not be a whole lot of fun. So that's a good design. Again, that's been, that was their adjustment. You can tell they went to halftime. We're gonna, we're gonna do some eye violations, as we used to call it, just kind of make the defense think you're doing one thing and do another. 
And it's, it's turned into two really big back-to-back -back runs. Yeah, that has put him over 100 yards rushing the fourth game in a row for Deuce Vaughn going back to last season with 100 yards. Inside the five goes Deuce. Now I like to compare this to like a boxing match. You know, you're just punching each other, and eventually one team's going to wear down the other. And right now you can tell that K-State has got a little extra pep in their step. Their offensive line right now is controlling the game. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. And right now that's kind of the difference. And that's, that's exactly what Chris Kleiman wanted to see out of his offensive line and this offense, making those adjustments as this game's gone on. You can tell he went to the offensive line and said, hey, look, we're going to ride you guys. We're going to make you guys Make sure you guys win the football game for us. Yeah, second and goal here. Do they go back to Deuce? You Easy. bet. Yep. Easy. Easy. Touchdown, Deuce Vaughn and K State, his third TD tonight. Great job by the offensive line. I can't outrun anybody, but I probably could have scored on that one. That's that's a great job by that front five. Just giving him a crease. Just an easy walk-in touchdown for Deuce Vaughn. Good night. You know, he's he's been a special player his first couple years here in Manhattan. He's a fun, he's a lot of fun to watch. Deuce Vaughn over a hundred yards rushing, three touchdowns, and a crater to run through. Yeah, look at the push they get it on number 90, or on number 88, rather. That's tough. Number 52 has no chance. You know, that's just, again, good design, good execution. I wish I could have had a hole like that to run through. I would have actually padded my stats a little bit. I didn't have any of those rushing touchdowns, but great job. And that's, that's exactly what K-State needed right there. Way to cap off the drive. His fourth game in a row with 100 or more rushing yards at 120 tonight. Remember, a freshman All-American from last season. A little padding added for K-State with that touchdown. Want to remind you, next Saturday on Big 12 Now here on ESPN Plus at 2 Eastern, this K-State team is going to take on Nevada, Baylor, and Kansas. will square off at 3.30. FIU Texas Tech at 7 Eastern. You can sign up now, ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 Now. Okay, Kansas State needed that. They have had adversity tonight, four turnovers, resulting in 13 points for Southern Illinois. The Wildcats trailed at the half. They made some good, good changes at the half. They've executed, you know. But look at this. It's still a one-score game. Yeah. It's still a one-score game. So that hole was so big. It's, I almost think they let them score on purpose, you know, to get the ball back. you got basically a two-minute drill here. You get the ball inside the five-yard line. You're probably thinking, okay, they're probably going to score anyway. Might as well let them punch this one in. And now you get the ball back give yourself more time on the clock. It's interesting. I don't know if that was the – the recipe or not, but it makes a lot of sense to me. You got a quarterback you got a lot of faith in. There's a flag down on the field. Number nine on the kicking team, that five yard penalty is added to the touchback spot. First down, Southern Illinois. Well, Shane told the story. Nick Hill saw Nick Baker lead a two-minute drive for his team to win a state title. He knows what the pressure situation is like. There is nobody else that Nick Hill wants at quarterback right now in this situation than Nick Baker. Without a doubt. He's seen it firsthand. I saw it last week, the execution he had, just getting on the ball and going. You know, I, I think if you're if you're Nick Hill right here, you got to be careful. you got to find a way to help with this pass rush. You can tell that defensive line starting to wear down this Southern Illinois offensive line. So you got to find a way to help give Nick Baker a little bit of time. Southern Illinois only has one timeout. Baker moving. Low pass. But the catch is made just before stepping out of bounds. It was Tyce Daniel, the tight end. Good job of getting out of bounds, basically. No time off the clock, you get five yards. But eventually in here, you got to get a chunk. 
you got to get an explosive play. You got to get down the field. This K State defense is hard to get the ball, you know, over the top behind their head as a as a secondary. And they connect with Ty Daniel again for the first down. And on the flip side, if you're K State, you can't get too too much of him to a prevent, or else he can just kind of nickel and dime you all the way down the field. Baker will throw again. This time hits Justin Strong coming out of the backfield. Pick up a five on the play. Daniel Green met him there. For a no-huddle team, this is you got plenty of time. Now you're, you're not panicked. This is what you do. This is your offense. This is what you want to do as an offense. Baker steps up. Back to the line of scrimmage. Khalid Duke there. So Robert Hintz, third down. And it's another first down for Southern Illinois. Landon Lenore makes the grab. The drive continues. Big conversion. Playing a little inside leverage on the in two, two inside guys. I was thinking he was going to try to hit an outbreaking route in the slot. Big conversion to Landon Lenore. Southern Illinois has never beaten a Big 12 opponent. Hartrup avoids the tackle. Back to back first downs. And there is a player down. It's McPherson for K-State. Well, his helmet came off. He's able to get up on his own. We've seen a lot of you know, those last few completions have kind of come over the ball. There's there's a, there's some space in there. Now you got to be careful because you, know, you got three linebackers in there. You got a safety that's kind of hanging around. So you got to be good with your eyes. You got to move those inside guys. You can't stare it down in the middle of the field. It's a big play for Nick Baker. And we had Tyce Daniel coming over the middle of the field and hesitated just a little bit. Ross Elder in coverage for K-State. Yeah, this time they, end up, they they come after him. They bring a little zone pressure. Man, excuse me, a man pressure from the field. Kind of change up their look a little bit. They've been kind of a soft zone. Then they go with the man pressure. To kind of change up their tendencies a little bit. 33 seconds on the clock. Southern Illinois. Oh, Baker was avoiding that. Landon Lenore, wow, how did Nick Baker get away from that tackle and get the first down? Unbelievable play. I know it's easy from up here because you can see things a lot better. If he had time, he's able to look back in the middle of the field. He had Tyce Daniel wide open for a touchdown. But great play. Good job. Good job picking the first down. The ball's out. K-State falls on it. It's Wildcat ball! There's that K-State pass rush. Look at Timmy Horn. When you need a big play. This is a unit they feel really good about. They're relentless. They've all got motors. The play's never over. They just pursue. They go after the football. This is a good unit. This defensive line is deep. They rotate guys. Tonight, in my opinion, they were the difference, especially in the second half. Felix and UDK Uzama, more pressure on Nick Baker to force that ball out. He's done that a couple of times tonight. And wow, you see Xavion Furkron talking to his quarterback, Nick Baker. I mean, he's played a heck of a game. He has. I mean, he has played. Played really had the one turnover, but yeah, he has managed it. He's done a great job. Xavion right there, you can tell he's a great leader. Just a, just a special, special young man. But yeah, Nick Bakers, he's gritty. He's a lot of fun to watch. He played well. That's a good football game. Wow, Kansas State loses Skylar Thompson in the first half. 
They hang on to win after trailing at halftime to Southern Illinois. Chris Kleiman knew coming into the season they had to be better on defense. That was a problem. Their defense kept them in this ball game and helped them win. And he told us, he said, I spent all my time with the defense versus last year he was kind of doing all three phases. He wanted his sole focus to be on this defense. He knew they needed to play better. They've got a lot of veteran players all over that defense, which obviously helps. But more importantly, they just play with grit. I mean, they, they follow the leader of their head coach. They are fun to watch. They're an active group. And that scheme, coupled with veteran players that play hard and don't make a ton of mistakes, that's tough. If you're an offense, that's tough to go against. So, yeah, if you're Chris Kleiman, you got to be uh, you got to be excited with the way that defense played, especially down the stretch. And then on the other side of the ball, Deuce Vaughn, he had that fumble, but then he came back and he was steady. 26 carries for 120 yards, his fourth game in a row with over 100 rushing yards. And we see why his, he's dangerous. No defense wants to have to go against him. No, he's hard to tackle. And, you know, and the fumble may have been the best thing for him, you know, because it kind of just gets you going. You know, you're, you just kind of step on the gas maybe just a little bit more. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's a great night by, by a guy we featured early. And he is just uh, – I can't say enough good things about him. He's a, he's a great young, young man, a great football player. If I'm the Big 12, watch out. 22 is coming. And he's coming off, and he's a great football player. Wow, K-State gets a big win over Stanford handily last week, and then they come in this week at home, their home opener tested by a very talented Missouri Valley Football Conference team in Southern Illinois, but K-State gets the win 31-23 to go to 2-0 on the season. And Deuce is dead on the field with Shane. Well, Deuce was on the loose here tonight in Manhattan. Want to go back to running out that tunnel. We talked about it in the open. Your first time in front of a full house. What was that like for you, and how much did you feed off of this crowd? Man, it was, it was electric, man. I mean, coming out here and seeing a full house, I mean, it was something that you dream about when you play football when you're a kid. Come out here and see all that purple, everybody supporting us, man. We got the best fan base in the nation. They showed it today. Four straight games, rushing 100 yards. You found the end zone three times. What were you most pleased with in the way you ran tonight? I ran hard, ran really hard. My offensive line, they did a fantastic job. I, I give that four games on 100 yards, give me it, give them. They're the ones that got me there. And hey, just to see them playing their, their butts off every single day at practice and even out here, man, I, it's just fun to see. Talk about that defense, they stepped up big. 100%, I feel like we have a really, 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 really stout defense. And they showed that today, man. It got to the point where they had to buckle down, they had to pick us up, and that's exactly what they did, man. I love every single one of them boys on that side of the ball. They battle for us, and they're a great defense. What was the mood like in that locker room at the half? Did you get a chance to speak with Skyler Thompson? I, I've not been able to speak with him. I, I haven't seen him since it happened. I mean, I'm, I'm praying for him. I'm going to go see him after this. But, uh, man, we, we, when we went in, we were like, man, we're playing for Skyler. That's our dog in there. We're going to win this game for him. Of course, we were down at half, but there was no doubt in our mind that we are going to come out here and finish this game. Congratulations, Deuce. Nice win. Thank you. Back to you, Courtney. A good win for K-State. We certainly hope that Skyler Thompson will be okay. But... K-State comes out, Will Howard comes in. They find a way to get the job done at home. A win in their home opener, 31 to 23 over Southern Illinois. Deuce Vaughn with 120 yards rushing. Wildcats improving to 2-0 on the season with a victory.